about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. There is no one else like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for what God, what God is doing in our midst. We give him all the praise for his presence. Moses said, if your presence goeth not with us, do not take us from here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's a year of light and dominion. That's what the Lord spoke to us and I'll be sharing on light. I'll be opening us up to the revelation. What, what is the meaning of this word? Hallelujah. Oftentimes, God communicates his intentions in coded languages and messages. Hallelujah. He would put it and grant grace that that revelation be opened up. When there is an opening of God's word, we can believe and we can walk in that reality. Hallelujah. So what is the meaning of it being the year of light? What does that mean? Just keep the issue of dominion first. What does it mean? What's the light about? Hallelujah. A year of light. There are two dimensions to this prophetic word as being light. A year of light. The first is that God wants us to have light. And the second dimension that is that he wants us to become lights. So he wants us to have, hallelujah, and then he wants us to become. The first dimension is the inner workings of light in and through us. And then the second dimension is what we will become to the world. And, and I'm going to just share very quickly, hallelujah. So God wants us to have light. You cannot become what you are not. I mean, you cannot reflect what you are not. Is that true? And so he wants us to become. To as many as believe in him, he gave them power to become. He gives you power to become. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 119, verse 130. Psalm 119, verse 130. Please make sure you're writing. What does it mean to have light? What is light? What is God really saying? When he says it's a season, it's a year of light. What is his expectation? What is in the mind of God? Because the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit can search the mind of God and make known unto us the accurate intentions and counsel of God. Psalm 119. The entrance of thy words giveth light. And it giveth understanding to the simple. He said the entrance. Can we have other versions? Is that possible? Okay. Uh, let's try New Living Translation. NLT. Put it beautifully. The teaching of your word gives light. Hallelujah. The teaching of your word gives light. So even the simple, even those who are void of understanding, 
Hallelujah. The entrance of thy word. Question. If you pick up your Bible and read, it didn't say the seeing. It didn't say the speaking. It said the entrance. So, how can what you are reading enter you? This is a mystery. He said, if it does not enter you, it cannot give you light. It can be stored as scripture, but it only becomes light if it enters you. The entrance of thy word giveth light and even understanding to the simple. So what is the revelation behind light? Write it. The first revelation behind light is that light symbolizes supernatural insight into scriptures supernatural insight when God says it's our year of light that means he's granting us unusual access into scripture insight uncommon insight opening us up to understand the hidden mysteries the hidden mysteries that are encoded in scripture now you may ask, why do we need these mysteries? You see, because the Bible says God made many lights. Is that true? But he made one light to rule. So there is a relationship between light and dominion. He said he made two great lights. And that light, although there were many lights, the coming of that light enforced its dominion. It ruled in the day and ruled in the night. So the greater your light, the greater you are able to walk in this authority and dominion. But since that light comes through the word of God, we need insight. Are you following me now? Let's see 2 Corinthians 4 verse 6 quickly. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 6. Second Corinthians 4 verse 6. If you can give us in NLT or the message, anyone that is available. Hallelujah. Please read it. The message. Very interesting. It started when God said, Light up the darkness. And our lives filled up with light as we saw and understood God in the face of Jesus Christ. All bright and beautiful. He said, as we saw and understood. Hallelujah. King James says, God who had commanded light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our heart. To bring to us the knowledge of the glory of God as seen on the face of Jesus Christ. So light connotes insight. Depth of insight. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. We really, really need the light of God. Accurate insight into the word of God. Because Jesus Christ was cautioning the people and he said, be careful lest your light be not darkness. That means be careful so that what you are calling light may not really be darkness. Hallelujah. Luke 11, I believe. Luke 11, 35. Let's look at it. Luke 11, 35. Luke 11, 35. Just give us an um, amplified. Amplified. Okay. Or you can just leave it. It says, take heed therefore. Let's start from 34. 34. The light of the body is the eye. Is that true? It says, therefore when thy eye be single, thy whole body is full of light. But when your eye is evil, your body is full of darkness. 35. It says, be careful, therefore, that the light that's in you is not darkness. There are many people carrying revelations they think is light, but it's darkness. Are you getting me? So God is saying, as you begin to explore the things you are calling light, contend for accurate insight, so that you will not be carrying a revelation that is darkness. Whereas you convince yourself that I have Rema. There, there are all kinds of revelations in the body of Christ. And the Lord is saying, be careful. So that what you keep celebrating because of the flamboyancy. Be careful. Let you not be beguiled by darkness. I'm telling you the truth. There are many people carrying darkness around. Because it sounds good and sounds spiritual. 
Hallelujah. Because when it is light, it should set people free. It should deliver people. It says the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. So this is the year to guard your heart with all diligence. And make sure that that which you uphold and absorb in your spirit is light indeed. For the Bible says it is possible that a man can carry darkness and believe he's holding on to light. Many people have been holding on to dark theologies, dark mindsets, dark philosophies for decades. Many of our family members have held on to teachings that were taught by prophets, apostles, teachers, evangelists. They will not let it go. And the Bible says, be careful so that what you are carrying, if it's a terrible thing when you are holding darkness, and you want that darkness to bring light. Hallelujah. Supernatural insight. So that God brings us into light indeed. Hallelujah. It's a very painful thing. If after many years you find out that what you've held on to and argued all your life was a lie. Is that true? There are many people who have held on to a lot of things. The baptism in the Holy Spirit for instance. There are so many people who have held on to all of these theologies. There's nothing like that. Deliverance, for instance. There are many people who have held on to it. Oh, I'm born again. Everything is all right. But there is darkness in this family. And they will not confront it. No, there's nothing wrong. I'm fine. Until they become acute victims. And the Bible says, be careful. So this is the year when you will edit the things that you have kept in your spirit and throw out anything that is not consistent with the word of God. No matter how long, it will require humility because some of us have argued over darkness for a long time. Hallelujah. Number two, light connotes understanding and comprehension. It's not enough to know. It's not enough to know. You must understand. Job 32 verse 8, Eli who began to speak, and he said, but there is a spirit in man. He said, and the inspiration of the Almighty, he didn't say gives men knowledge, make it men of understanding. There is a difference between knowledge. Knowledge tells you what is available. It creates awareness. Understanding guides you on how to apply it accurately. I've always used the example knowledge is that when you want to make jollof rice for instance you need rice you need pepper you that's knowledge understanding tells you when to combine what ingredient where because that you have rice and you have this does not mean you can cook many people have knowledge that puffs up the bible says ever learning but never coming to the comprehension so we have so many spiritual laws around us but we do not understand what principles are responsible for what? So we just use any kingdom principle when occasion serves us. When you are afraid the nearest thing is the blood of Jesus or Holy Ghost fire or, or the anointing of the Holy Spirit or prayer or agreement. All of these things are spiritual keys. And you understanding is the ability to gain mastery over the operation. The operations of the kingdom. It's not enough to know. It's not enough to know. There is a spirit in man. And the breath of the almighty can make what you know become understanding. He explains to you. He opens it up so that you are not confused. What makes a doctor a consultant? Listen, listen. Almost there are many things that a fresh doctor knows. Or a consultant knows that the fresh doctor knows. But he doesn't have understanding. Praise the Lord. When, when a consultant is carrying out surgery, he doesn't bring a special knife. Is that true? It's the same knife, the same everything. But there is understanding. And this is what many of us need to have. Understanding. Understanding. So that when you see something happening in your family, you are not confused. You don't panic. You know the exact spiritual law to bring into place. This is what spiritual maturity is all about. Hallelujah. I've said it again and again. The opposite of fear 
in my opinion, is not faith. The opposite of fear is understanding. You always fear what you don't understand. There's nobody doubting that the chair you are sitting on now can hold your weight. Is that true? Anything you truly understand, you don't become afraid of it again. A pilot can man an airplane, a big airplane, because he has understanding. And he's not afraid that a tiny man can drive hundreds of people thousands of feet above sea level because of understanding hallelujah somebody else can sit on that plane and say i believe we will not die that you were not afraid and you died courageously does not mean are you getting my point now it's not about dying courageously it's about not dying because at that point you are flying people the plane is nose diving and you're saying i know we will arrive nobody should be still in this plane you are falling Get understanding. Hallelujah. Get understanding. Number three. Light brings direction. And every time there is direction, there is an end to confusion. Direction. Psalm 119 verse 105. Are you getting blessed tonight? So that we don't just say light, 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 light. Direction. The reason why many people run to prophets and apostles and people around is direction. People want direction in every area of their life. Direction. People go to herbalists because they want direction. What is wrong in our family and what is the way out? Direction. So when God says it's a year of light, it means that there is an unusual grace to bring accurate direction to your life. Hallelujah. It says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. A lamp to my feet, a light to my path. That means an end comes to confusion. Because he will begin to let me see. The Bible says, you shall hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. Not these are the ways, choose. This is the way. Walk ye in it. And he said, you will find rest for your soul. Many of us are trusting God. What job to do? Many of us are trusting God. Where to settle down? All kinds of things. Many of us are trusting. Our family members are confused. What business to do? What can I do? Everybody is asking questions. This year, if you believe God, God is saying, I will come to you. You will hear my voice in the night. God will just come and bring direction. Direction that you've been waiting for years. God will say, this is it. Walk in it. Wise men saw the star from the east. And it began, they began to follow that light. Until they arrived at where Jesus was. No confusion. They followed the light. For as long as they kept looking at the light. It kept directing them. Until it settled. May the Lord take the light and drop where your destiny needs to go and that you will just follow that light into unending levels of blessings and success light oh how we need direction how we need direction hallelujah somebody just gets up and feels like you want to go to saminaka you see there is nothing as terrible as being in a place where god is not because he's not committed to defend you. Hallelujah. Psalm 43 verse 3. Very interesting scripture. Direction. Hallelujah. Where we are today by the grace of God as a ministry. Is a product of divine direction. The ability to hear God. A lot of people say, I can be anywhere and I will succeed. Try it. The Bible says, whatsoever he does, prospers. Whatsoever he does, prospers because it is directed. I prophesied as I was commanded, not as I wished. As I was commanded. Hallelujah. Oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. 
Let them bring me unto your holy hill and unto your tabernacle. Let your light lead me. This must be your prayer. Send your light. Hallelujah. Send your light. Let your light lead me. Light means life. L-I-F-E. Connotes life. John 8, 12. If we can have it in the Amplified. John 8, 12. Very powerful scripture. I'm telling you all of the things that are encapsulated in this word light. John 8, 12. Once more, Jesus addressed the crowd. He said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not be walking in darkness, but will have the light which is. There is revelation that you have that will translate into the quality of your life. Are you getting my point? It says that this light this year can bring life to you. They are life to those who find them and health. That means the revelation you get can be what will be responsible for divine health. So that it's no longer an issue of guesswork. Hallelujah. Light. The light you have can put you in command of unbelievable realms of wealth and prosperity. And it can add to the quality of your life. One department came to meet me and we were interacting with them and my heart broke so much. I was talking with them and just asking them their expectations for the year and what they want God to do for their life and family. I think almost everyone, their, their requests were just, or their expectations, intimacy with God and financial breakthrough for my family. There are many families that need the mercy of God. Is that true? It's easy for everybody to wear suit and come and sit down and laugh. But the Bible says, if you follow me, you will get light that will translate into light. Prosperity is a formula. It's not guesswork. It is specific. It is exact. And this is the year that you will know it for yourself. Hallelujah. As a ministry, we are unapologetic about wealth and prosperity. I'm not one of those many preachers that say, no, there's no problem. Just seek God. No. We believe. John Wesley said, any religion that does not cater for the economic well-being of the people is an irresponsible religion. We don't want people coming to worship and bow down and cry only to get up and go into prostitution and arm robbery and occultism because of lack. We don't want to hear that our parents are moving out Landlords are kicking them out of the house and every kind of thing happening. When you are blessed, it gives you options and you can choose to serve God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are many people who, get, who want to get married. For years they've been trusting God but there's no money. It's a terrible thing. Many of our family members want to do a lot of things. There are many of our family members, our parents are almost 60, 70 years. They cannot boast of one good house, not even a good car to help them. It's not, it's, it's an anomaly. But this year we will change it by the power of the light of God. Remember, God asked you a question, can two walk together? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Light also means showing forth. Ah, this is the part I love. Light connotes a display, a revelation, a manifestation, an unveiling. Isaiah 60 verse 1. Arise, shine. Not because you have entered a new year. Arise, shine because your light has finally arrived. That revelation, amplified please. Can we see it? Isaiah 60 verse 1. Amplify puts it in a beautiful way. Arise from the depression and prostration which circumstances have kept you. 
He says, rise to a new life. This is a prophecy for somebody. He said, arise. This is a prophecy for a family. Arise from the depression, this degradation that circumstances have kept you. He said, rise to a new life. He says, shine. Be radiant with the glory of the Lord. Why? For your light has come. Arise. This is what many of us will be telling our family members. I tell you, this year, this year, some of you will single-handedly go home and just gather your family members and say, salvation has come. What is wrong? What needs to be done in this family? Saviors, the Bible says, shall come out of Zion. It's time, this is the year your Christianity will have practical evidence to your loved ones. Don't blame them for going to Habalist until you can prove that there is a superior government that reigns on the earth. Don't blame them for going to witch doctors. Are you getting my point? Don't blame them for traveling around. We keep criticizing people rather than contending to deliver what is authentic. Let me tell you something. I showed the welfare department. Yeah, that was the department that came to see me. I showed them a video. Pastor Jakes called me and said, Josh, you need to see an incredible video. I said, really? What's the video? And he showed me the link. I I'm sure some of you have heard it. About a lake that just appeared in the east there was an explosion and the lake just appeared and muddy lake but it seemingly had the power to heal people thousands of people at once they went there no protocol no welfare no suit nobody called apostle people were coming from all over men you can keep criticizing human beings are too desperate to listen to you if you cannot bring the authentic light stop wasting your time are you getting my point? Watch the video and see people almost naked. They were videotaping them. They were bathing in the muddy water. That's because we men of God have failed them. We can stand and brag and make noise. And they will listen to us. Immediately they finish. They will travel and continue. People were cutting the tree. They were cutting the tree in the river just to take home. Paradventure. It will be responsible for healing and prosperity. And all of them, most of the people there said it has to be Jesus. How are you going to tell them this thing is demonic? When they sat down in your assembly for years and nothing happened. Are you getting my point? Let me tell you something. People are more desperate than ever. No rema. There was no man of God that came to compare spiritual things with spiritual things. The people were not daft. They came from all over. They were to an extent, brothers and sisters, that they were digging into the ground. And when they saw water, they just fetched it. People made money selling jerry cans, selling suya, selling, you know, the bike people. The bike people, they were interviewed and they were happy. They said, this has to be God. We've never had it this good. They said, do you plan for this water to stop? Say, why? No. Why? This is prosperity. I mean, ah. We are very unapologetic about the fact that it is God's desire to bless you. Prosperity does not take people to hell. It's materialism that takes people to hell. And materialism is not having materials. Materialism is the influence of what you have on your relationship with God. Hallelujah. Lazarus went to heaven with his poverty. Abraham with his prosperity is still in heaven. It was not too much money or lack of money that took them. Many of the requests of our family members, for some of us, the whole request of our family members, what can bring peace in our entire family is not more than 100,000. And then they go to a herbalist and give him 20,000 and it doesn't work. They now go and borrow 50,000 and give him because they are looking for solution. May you be that light this year. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We arise and shine, our light is come. For the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. We arise and shine, our light is come. See the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Hallelujah. Inside.
understanding, direction, life is showing forth. The Bible says that we have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. We, we should show forth. Comes from the Greek word doxazo. A display of the decree of a king's splendor. Hallelujah. It was the custom of kings in ancient times that when they achieved certain feats, they will call people to come and celebrate with them. This was the case with King Ahasuerus. And so he brought them to come and see his provinces. This year, may the Lord make you an object of praise. That he will use you as a testament of what he can do with a man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you have all of this, then you can now become the light. You can now become the light. What does it mean to become the light? It means to become a standard. It means it, it, to become a pattern. To become a reference. Hallelujah. That when they are looking for a genuine, authentic Christian, you can be a reference. Matthew 5, from verse 14 to 16. Matthew 5 verse 14 to 16. The Bible says, you are the light. Matthew 5, you are the light of the world. The light of this system, cosmos. You are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. That means whatever has covered your light this year must give way. You are a city set on a hill and cannot be hidden. Verse 15 nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket he said but on a lampstand and it will give light because of you many people you will be like the ark of noah that incorporated there are people who are not even born again but because of your presence the 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 span of your light will cover certain people there are many of our loved ones that need us without us they may die and the Bible says it gives life to all who are in the house. Verse 16. Let, permit your light. Let it so shine. Before who? Not before trees. God wants your light. That which he has made you become. He wants it to shine before men. That they may see your good works. And glorify your father in heaven. Hallelujah. So as an individual, you will become a standard this year. That you will be a portrait of a balanced Christian. Holy, prosperous, healthy. Genesis 24 verse 1. It says, and Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And God had blessed him in all things. All things. All things. This is the year we will contend for every part of our life. To look like the image of the Christ. Hallelujah. You must contend. Not that you'll be prosperous and be sickly. Not that you'll be healthy. No, no. Every area of your life. Let your light so shine before men. That they may see your good works. And glorify your, heaven, your father in heaven. As a ministry, this is our prophetic destiny. The standard. Isaiah 49 verse 6. Oh, I believe this with all my heart. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will hear. Oh, speak from your throne and the earth will hear. Send your word from your throne and the earth will hear my altar is calling you oh god my altar is calling you oh god take my praise oh god Take my praise, Lord, my worship is 
is calling you, oh God. My worship is calling you. Hallelujah. God gave me this specific word. I shared it with the leaders. This is what God is going to be doing with us. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant. This is what we have been doing. To raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. But this is the new mandate. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. It says that thou mayest be my salvation. Not bring it, be it. You will become a representation of my salvation even to the ends of the earth. It says you have been faithful raising people, training people, building people. I now measure a thousand cubits and I increase capacity. He said, I will also, in addition to what you are doing, I will give you as a light. I will give you as a light unto the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation to the ends of the earth. This is what God is going to do. This year. And then he will bring us through this light into a realm of dominion. Rulership. Let me show you one very powerful scripture. Zechariah 1.21 Dominion means absolute control. It means rulership. Sovereign authority. The ability to be in charge and to be in control. Hallelujah. This dominion is not just dominion over men. But dominion over first the forces of darkness. Are you getting my point? Then said I. What come this to do? Amplify it please. Can we have amplified? Then said I, what are these horns and smiths coming to do? And he said, these are the horns or powers that have scattered Judah. Judah means praise. There are horns that have stopped families from laughing. There are horns that have kept people down. He said, so that no man lift up his head. There are families and destinies where no man has been able to lift up his head. No marriage, no joy, no prosperity, no increase. Their spiritual lives dead. He said, but these smiths or workmen have come to terrorize them. These are the carpenters that God is sending. Hallelujah. He says they have come to terrorize, to cause them to be panic stricken. To cast out the horns or powers of the nations who lifted up their horns against the land of Judah. This is the year you will see the practical displacing of Satan. It will be a contention of light over darkness. Once and for all, the devil will give up over your life and your family. Please believe it. Please believe it. This is what dominion is all about. It's not about being commander-in-chief. And telling people come and clean my chair this is foolishness dominion is the ability to be a light hallelujah he said those in nephtha and zebulun have seen a great light a great light has come to them distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us so there are horns remember our teaching give me this mountain brothers and sisters upon every mountain there are giants there is a spiritual dimension to this life. Hallelujah. People do not just sit, just succeed or, or experience breakthroughs and increase. But this year, by the grace of God, 
we will arise because our light has come and we will compel darkness to bow and all of these horns that have terrorized people and families they will give way one scripture psalm 110 psalm 110 sorry 110 verse 2 a popular scripture we'll read it together 110 verse 2 let's read it's projected It says, the Lord shall send the rod. What is that rod? Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Hallelujah. That rod is the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the comforter. He said, the Lord will send a dimension of the Holy Spirit that will open men to light. And on account of that, he said, rule thou. Not in their absence, rule thou in the midst of your enemies. Many of you, your parents have not gone to the village for years because they know when they go, they will die. You are the one who will go and say, let me see the devil. Rule thou. Rule thou. This is the year you speak to somebody and say in the name of Jesus, let that barrenness be over and it leaves at once. This is the year somebody will come and lie down on your bed and get filled with the Holy Spirit and just get up born again filled with the Holy Spirit somebody takes tea in your house and goes back and unending breakthroughs because they just contacted light the Bible says the light shines in darkness rule thou the Lord will send the rod out of Zion see let me tell you your blessing is not authentic until your family members participate in it this selfish Christianity of chop alone, where it, the, the kingdom doesn't work that way. As for me and my... Hallelujah. I went home and I saw dramatic levels of breakthrough in my house. I said, that's right. This is exactly how it should be. Hallelujah. The devil will be under your feet. Hallelujah. This is why we are teaching because the Bible says we should do this. But Hebrews chapter 2 tells us that we do not yet see all things. Remember our scripture? Let's look at it. Hebrews 2. Verse 6 to 8. That's why we need light to enforce our dominion. Hebrews 2. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? 7. Thou hast made him a little lower than Elohim and crowneth him with glory and honor thou didst set him over how many all the works of your hands that means nobody can use what was created to do enchantment against me the bible says i've been given authority how can a man use stone or use goat or animal and then make incantations i pity the man that will call my name in a shrine this is the year it will catch fire both the herbalist the person who brought it the Bible says Dagon fell. Dagon fell in the Bible. He has given him authority over all the works. All the works. Hallelujah. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all things in subjection under his feet, he left nothing that is not put under him. But this is a dilemma. I said, but now... We do not yet see all things. Are you seeing why light is important? Without light, there's no dominion. You can claim it, but it may not work. It says the reality now. So it speaks to us about God's perspective. That this is what has been done. But right now, today, we do not yet see all things under his feet. But when light comes, it will grant us access to rule in the day and to rule in the night. Hallelujah. You believe this? These are the mighty things that God is going to do. Nigeria, the Lord revealed a few things to me. I'm not a prophet, but God speaks to me. 
And the Bible says, that which I tell you in the secret place, declare down the mountain top. We need to pray for our government. I saw a lot of political chaos. In fact, a lot of chaos. Hallelujah. We need to pray a lot of chaos. We need to pray for the president that his life be preserved. Hallelujah. And then the Lord showed me I saw another terrorist group that is even greater than Boko Haram. Hallelujah. And they will begin to be pronounced again and again. And this is the wickedness that the devil wants to bring. This will not just be Nigeria. Across the entire sub-Saharan Africa. Because it's an agenda. There is only one resistance to all of this. God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I saw so many things. I told you last year, or in 2007, the Lord told me, if you can remember, I said an economic recession was going to come and hit the world in a very great way. That was when I began to talk of massive kingdom wealth transfer. In 2008, I said, this is the year. And when it happened, I said again, that this is the first one another one is coming and the lord told me this year the economic recession will hit again for the second time you can't pray against it you can only exempt yourself it's a written judgment hallelujah it's going to happen very chaotic it will humble the government of nations hallelujah it will humble people a lot nigeria is going to begin to come to the lamb light especially in terms of economics last year i said that nigeria was going to lead africa in terms of economic empowerment go and read the newspaper it has happened with over about 400 billion or so ahead of south africa this is happening god himself is bringing all of this and there will be such a manifestation of deliverance in nigeria this year this thing called deliverance you will see it in dramatic ways it will no longer just be in churches because of light and enlightenment hallelujah deliverance it will look like an object of mockery but don't you criticize it because it's the, the preparing ground for the birthing of something powerful i told you about ghana south africa and nigeria nigeria is going to is going to do a lot of mighty mighty exploits this year forget about all the stories that people are saying god is faithful hallelujah i also see that the lord revealed to me a number of things we have to pray against death for many not families here but generally in the country we have to pray against death hallelujah and i saw one of the things that the enemy is doing is infecting people with incurable diseases this one is no longer just hallelujah diseases that medical science may not even be able to detect you just see people just dying hallelujah i don't know when it will happen but i'll keep announcing it i saw the death of somebody who was once a president in this country hallelujah i had seen this two years ago i was there in a vision i saw his obituary and every new year god keeps reminding me i honestly don't know when it will happen but let's watch and see hallelujah And God is going to be doing great things. This year, we will experience levels of financial prosperity. Write it. Write it, please. Write it. I'm not just talking. Write it. 
is one of the things God specifically told me. Specifically. If you don't believe it, no problem. You can believe the other things that we have. But yes, there will be an avalanche of wealth and prosperity. Praise the Lord. We need to pray against death. I saw a lot of ABU lecturers dying. A lot of ABU lecturers dying. This thing started last year. I began to caution this thing. A lot of ABU lecturers, especially professors. We need to pray because it's a demonic thing. It's not just normal. No. It's a very demonic thing. I saw a lot of academic exploits too this year. A lot of mighty academic exploits. Please believe me. Believe me. Recovery, restoration for people. Especially people who have been praying. I want us to pray so I'll just hurry up. I'm just, I don't want to forget anything. Marriages, miracle, mighty, mighty marriages. I saw this one. It was so much I was surprised. Honestly, I saw marriages I was scared. Trust me. We will all live to see it. I don't mean here, Koinonia. Mighty, mighty marriages. Yes. How could I have skipped it? I saw a lot of marriages. Including those who did not even plan it. Yes, I saw surprises. Except, except, look, let me tell you, thank God we'll all be alive to see it. You will see people who did not, it was not part of their goal in January. But the hand of God will move. Just leave God to do what he wants to do. It's a year of light and dominion. That's why God said, can two walk together? Listen. Listen, and this is the scripture the Lord told me. When Abraham took Isaac for sacrifice, there was no lamb yet. But he said, just go Jehovah Jireh. God will provide. And the Bible says, listen, when the obedience of Abraham was tested, he said, just go across, there is a lamb. On the second time, when Jesus needed to enter the city, he said, go to a city called Straight. You will see a code that no man had ridden on it. Tell them the master has need of it. Believe it. I love saying things before they come to pass. Hallelujah. As a ministry, we will experience levels of expansion and impact. I saw it a lot levels of expansion i saw a lot of people getting blessed from niger niger republic i don't know what it is about that place but i saw so many people from the teachings niger republic so blessed i mean it was a wildfire it was causing a wildfire especially among the young people hallelujah so many other miraculous things that the Lord showed me. We will discuss it as we come, as, as the year. Um, another, oh, I remember, I must say it. I saw something that shocked me. Well, let me just say it. Still about prosperity. I was taken in a vision and I remember I was standing in front of this church. This, the... The Equa Church. And I looked and I saw an array of cars. In my mind, listen, listen. In my mind, I was saying, uh -uh. a lot of cars right from that place down. And I was, I, was, I was wondering. I said, Lord, what is all this one again? This is amazing. This is what you are going to do for families and for people. And many of them will be gifts. It will not be something that someone will buy. Gifts. Gifts. I believe. I 
Manifestations of miracles, signs, wonders in a scale that will shock you. Families, I saw a lot of unbelievers, I saw a lot of Muslims coming here, I saw a lot of some of our family members that vowed that they will never come here. You watch them by themselves, you don't need to by themselves the mighty things that God will do mighty things mighty things in the rain in the sun hallelujah these great things that God will do hallelujah do you believe these things I'm sharing hallelujah God will do this for the glory of his name praise the Lord I wanted to say it to him personally, but Bishop, I saw you driving a Camry, right? It. Brown Camry. I've been struggling to tell him. God will bring a lot of prosperity, even in the house. You know, we had been planning for just one bus. You will be amazed. To see what God will do this year amazed amazed not just because of project 10,000 hallelujah see the Bible says when Jesus was born some people saw the light and they started coming with their gifts they came with gold they came with frankincense they came with man and the Bible says they started looking for that star nothing would deter them until they found the baby and they began to drop the gift watch out and see dramatic manifestations people would just be sleeping and God would just wake them and say come and bless the house of God come and bless the work of God hallelujah and I saw this spilling over to many families even restoration restoration supernatural restoration hallelujah very quickly so we'll pray a few resolutions that I want you to adopt this year a few resolutions you need to make up your mind on some things it's not enough to shout amen he said this charge I give unto you my son Timothy that you war a good warfare with the prophecies that have been spoken unto you so when prophecy comes the Bible says a virgin will bear a son. It never said Mary. Mary made herself available. Huh? The Bible tells us someone was going to betray him, Jesus. He never called Judas. Judas aligned with that prophecy. Prophecy is like rain. If you bring a bucket, you will get water. Hallelujah. Number one. You must have a childlike heart of a learner. This year, 2011, you must increase your passion for insight. You must increase your passion. And this requires meekness and teachability. This is the year you throw away arrogance, MOG, MO, whatever. Just throw it away and humble yourself. Hallelujah. When it was time for Jesus to give them bread, he said, tell the people to sit down on the grass. That means if you are too big to sit down, no bread for you. He said, if you are interested in eating bread, sit down. Hallelujah. He says, one thing is needful. Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. But this one thing is needful, to sit. Not to stand and be staring at the master, to sit. 
a position that puts you in ancient times when a rabbi was teaching the people sat down nobody would stand and be listening to a rabbi so this is the year that you will sit down you must have a passion in your heart to learn some of you even when you come out to pray the way you are praying we know you are far from god you cannot even construct a good spiritual sentence you just mix everything you just know that this is you know how politicians talk when they come on stage they try to act like they know god but their addictions betray them one of the common thing in any culture is their language hallelujah number two you must have a resolve you must have a determination to apply and live by the revealed truth no matter the price and no matter the temporary challenge you must have a resolve a determination to apply and live by the revealed truths these truths that you are hearing it will not profit you please those outside make sure you are listening if you cannot write anything you can come and meet the media people and they'll give you our messages are free after the meeting apply the things it's not just what you know but what you know what you understand and apply hallelujah apply the truth no matter the price no matter the challenge number three you must have a resolve to place god and his agenda this year above every other pursuit above every other quest and above every other ambition you cannot give god second place this year hallelujah so it's a time for you to go back and search what have you put above god there are many of us you love god you are born again but for sure god is not number one you must make him above all the true proof of love and passion is commitment. You cannot claim to love a man or a thing and not be committed. Doggedly committed. And let me use the opportunity to encourage you. Join a department. There are many of you that have been sitting here for one year, two years. You just come and find the place clean and you just start laughing. It's not good. You don't know how the chairs are clean. You don't know who swept what. You don't know where they had the rehearsals. And, and you are full of potential and grace. There is a dimension that only kingdom service can take you into. This should be the year. Many of us are afraid of commitment. Because we know we don't want to be serious with God. You don't want a situation where people will probe your life. There are many departments. Make yourself available. Hallelujah. Make yourself available. Huh? so just coming to sit inside and sit outside immediately they finish the grace you and your friend you just run away serve the lord with diligence hallelujah number what now four okay just two more resolve to see the glory of god revealed in every area of your life make up your mind that this year I'm not going to celebrate God in one aspect of my life and then have another aspect staring at me. That means you must go and write all the areas of your life. I have a series on prosperity coming, so I'm going to teach on that. But let me give you a preview that there are five areas of your life that you must experience prosperity. The word prosperity comes from the word prosper. It means to do well. First is spiritual prosperity second is mental prosperity if you're a billionaire and you are mad you are not that's that's it doesn't make sense is that true number three is your health number four is your finances and number five is your relationships these five areas you must contend and tell god this year i must have rest round about the glory of the lord must be revealed in every one of these areas five resolve to enforce order in every area of your life this is very important many of us are so disorganized this is the year you will grow up in jesus name disorganized in every area of our lives this is the year you bring yourself into a level of decorum have order hallelujah 
one proof of excellence is order when everything is done decently when everything is done in order order means efficient management of your time your opportunities your resources bring your life under divine order no wasting of time no wasting of resources no wasting of opportunities you must bring your life under divine order hallelujah and finally you must make a determination to spend time with god this year in worship in prayer let seven days not pass let a week not pass that you will not dedicate at least a day in prayer and fasting those who built us spiritually did not teach us that prayer and fasting are part of the tools for efficient spiritual growth so every time we do it a lot of people just say oh, okay let's fast for seven days or 21 days or 30 days or 40 days or 100 days or 200 days and then after that the people now say god i've given you your own share of the year leave the other for me no fasting must be part of your life at least once in a year or once in a week sorry thursdays are a good time to fast you can fast on thursdays prepare yourself if you can't fast full day at least fast half day quality half day quality half day don't wake up by 10 and, and pray by it. see you remember the resolutions we are making some of you are already laughing this is the year when you will be serious with god if you want true spiritual power spend time with god in fasting don't let anybody tell you the era of fasting is over and so on and so forth no no thursdays for instance 6 to 12 6 to 2 6 to 4 6 to 6 as god grants you the ability very soon it will become part of your life and then you will see the enormous spiritual capacity he gave unto one five unto one two unto one one not according to their prayer request according to their ability the capacity they gave him determined what he gave them when the man with five increased capacity he sees it from the person with one and added to him if you enlarge when there was no more vessel the oil stopped flowing hallelujah praise the lord our priority this year as a ministry will be to build to equip and empower god's people even through these meetings we will keep on doing what we are doing the hand of god is here by the grace of god we trust that this year god will use this ministry in a very mighty way hallelujah that every week will be a time of an unveiling of deep truths applicable revelations that you will see transformation in your life i was praying to god and i was i think i was discussing with the welfare i said this year by the grace of god i plan i i, I don't know I, I let me not implicate myself here but i pray that god will help me hallelujah i want to make sure that as much as possible every friday i'm around you see because my primary assignment is not to the nations around my primary assignment is to you first if you are not well fed and i'm around making everybody saying joshua selman koinonia and my own people are dying here reminds me of some of our parents isn't it we'll be dying at home and they're donating money in in foundations and and charities which is good but make sure your own people are well fed you can even add that as part of your goals this year that you will not do anything to anybody outside your family except god instructs that you have not done to the people around hallelujah if you buy chicken for other people then it means that there's chicken in your house if god gives you an instruction it's okay but when you just get up and starve the people in your house to feed other people it doesn't make sense hallelujah praise the lord we trust God that we will experience healings, deliverance, and restoration and breakthroughs even through the power of the Holy Spirit. We really want to take advantage of our counselings, our Monday counselings. From this night, officially, we've resumed work. Our counselling, we want to dedicate time to minister to the people. Our Friday programs, Koinonia, 
school of ministry uh, more announcements will come on that but we plan to take the school of ministry very very serious it's a special time we have to train and build our students our external ministration media ministry and so on and so forth we are doing a lot uh, in koinonia this year and as other instructions come by we will comply accordingly hallelujah say after me this is my year of light it's my year of dominion hallelujah are you ready to pray rise up on your feet we're going to take some quality time to pray this is how to establish the prophetic word we're not rounding up we're praying hallelujah I want us to take some time to pray it says this charge I give unto you my son Timothy that you war a good warfare what does it mean to war a good warfare in prayer to say Lord I receive this must be part of my life hallelujah are you ready to pray please I want you to pray instrumentalist I hope you're ready we are going to pray very very seriously very seriously lift your voice and begin to thank him for the prophetic word say yeah of light and dominion begin to bless him thank you for the word oh God I believe the word I believe the word I believe the word I believe the word make sure you are praying outside everywhere make sure you are praying this is between you and God you are making the word real to you Lord is my year of light my year of insight increased insight Rekete koshota baka prengere balarabash. Sheka baka tabalarabash. I thank you for the word. I thank you for the word. I believe the word. I will see it manifest in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray supernatural insight into scripture. Say, Lord, open my eyes this year. Lift your voice and pray. Open my eyes, oh God. Show me hidden mysteries. Let there be an unfailing, a revelation of deep kingdom mysteries, deep kingdom principles that are responsible for victory, for health, for prosperity that will empower me to be an ambassador indeed open my eyes the spirit of man is the candle of the lord searching the inward parts of the belly open our eyes so oh god that we may behold wondrous things out of your law Give me revelation. Pray. Paul said, For this cause, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that He may grant unto you the spirit of revelation and understanding, the eyes of your understanding being flooded with light, that He may know, that He may know. Pray. Open my eyes, oh God. Open my eyes, oh God. Hallelujah. Insight. That you will just pick up your Bible and God will show you something that will set you on your feet. It will show you something that will open you up to a, another world of grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Two years or three years ago, one time I was praying and the Lord showed me a vision. And that thing changed my life forever. I saw like a big, like an ancient door. And when I looked at it very well, I found out that there were small, small doors that made up that big door. 
And when I came closer, it, it was like they zoomed me. And when I came, I found out that on every of those small, small doors, there were scriptures written on it. And the Lord told me that whatever scripture that truly enters you, that door is open unto you. That means what is possible for Sam uh, may not be possible for Folake. Are you seeing that? The difference is that the light you are seeing is not sufficient to open that door. But the Bible says, I have set before you an open door. No man can shut it. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. We are going to pray for understanding. It's not enough to have insight. Listen, listen. Take this prayer point seriously. You are going to say, Lord, all the principles that are responsible for the various areas of lifting, show me how they work. Show me how they work. Lift your voice and pray. Show me the keys of wealth, oh God. Show me how to operate it. Show me the keys of the anointing. Show me how to access the fountains of spiritual power. Show me the keys of holiness. Show me the keys of deliverance. Show me the keys that will make me command power even in my family. Make sure you are praying, understanding, and with all your getting, get understanding. Know how it works. Know how it works. It's not enough to have keys. Know how to apply it for maximum results. Pray. Pray. Show me, oh God, the keys. Show me how to operate it. The Bible says they know not. Neither do they understand. And so they grow up in darkness. And the earth is out of course. Show me. I tell you, many of you as you are praying right now, God will begin to give you understanding. Show me the mystery behind the operations of wealth. Show me the mystery behind the operations of grace. Show me the mystery. What makes the spirit of God become so real to a man show me the secret of church growth the secret of increase the secret of influence the secret of leadership the secret of power the secret of abundance show me oh god the mystery of doing business in deep waters of the spirit show me show me teach me oh God hallelujah 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 we are going to pray Isaiah 48 verse 17 can we project that Let's see, I hope I'm right. Lipo shatakata pradika labo se prianda. Everybody read it. You're going to pray and say, Lord, this year, you are going to direct me and my life will experience increase only. He said, I am the Lord that teacheth thee to profit. I can teach you how to do it and lead you in the way that you should go. Lift your voice and pray. Rekoto Sekata. Divine direction. Let the stars shine. Let the morning stars shine, oh God. Lead me to the place of destiny. Lead me to the next level. I'm tired of confusion. Show me, oh God. Show me, oh God. Show me, oh God. Go ahead and pray. Maritally, give me direction, oh God. I cry for direction. Financially, 
give me direction, oh God. Academically, lead me, oh God. Let the star arise and let me follow the star. In terms of my career, lead me, oh God. Rekoto Seketa. Lead me. Show me in my ministry. Show me, oh God. Show me. Give me direction. Pray. Illumination. By light. I am the Lord that teacheth thee to profit and lead you. Show me. Show me. Show me, oh God. Where you want me to be. What you want me to do. Who you want me to connect with. Show me, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next prayer point. You are going to pray and say, Lord, let a new dimension of unction, let a new dimension of power man to my life. This year, Lord, I want to move in the anointing in a level of grace. He said, and he measured a thousand cubits. Lift your voice and pray. A thousand cubits. And he was to my ankle. For no man can do these things except God be with him. Pray. My horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. And you will anoint me with fresh oil. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore God, even thy God, had anointed you. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Pray. Lord, I'm moving in the anointing. Pray. This is the year you do business with the anointing. You do your job with the anointing. You minister with the anointing. You conduct your activities under the influence of a heavy unction. He says you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. Pray. Pray. Worship team, pray. We minister with the anointing. Media, pray. The anointing takes us to another level. Prayer band, pray. We are praying with the anointing. Regoto Seketa. Koinonia, pray. This is our year of the anointing. Inside and outside. No matter how far you are. Let that anointing take you. Walk in signs, wonders, miracles. Let the sick be healed through your life. Let breakthroughs. Let chains be broken. Let lives be delivered and restored. Let sinners be saved. Let the anointing make you a savior. Let the anointing make you a deliverer. Hallelujah. 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 Two more prayer points and we're done. Please, everybody, participate. We're establishing the prophetic word right now. Hallelujah. Listen. This next prayer point is very important. You're going to pray. Listen. The Bible says, Arise. It says, Shine. And the Bible says in Daniel, I believe 12 or 22 or so, I can't remember verse 3. It says, And they that be wise shall shine like the firmament of the heaven. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore. Listen, you are going to pray. It's not a selfish prayer. Don't pray for your neighbor. You are praying for yourself. You are going to say, Lord, display, show what you have put in me this year. My God, let men see the hand of God. Go ahead and pray. Unveil it. Unlock it, oh God. In 2014, my year of light, 
I manifest I am a city to my family in my department in my faculty in my place of work in my place of business let there be a showing forth show forth oh God show forth prosperity through me show forth a healthy Christian through me show forth holiness through me show forth breakthrough through me let me become a portrait and a piece show forth manifest oh God manifest oh God hallelujah hallelujah listen listen there are many of us this is the year your destiny help us are so, so I'm supposed to see you hold on you are going to pray that that veil that has covered that grace of God in you that unction the Bible says there is this treasure there are many of you you have been relegated to the background this is the year this is the year say Lord arise in me come on pray Lord arise let men see you through me yes Lord yes Lord if you are looking for a vessel I'm available let me be an epitome of the anointing an epitome of wisdom an epitome of wealth and prosperity an epitome of leadership an epitome of power an epitome of revelation pray pray Make sure you are praying. Hallelujah. Listen, brothers and sisters, this prayer is so powerful. There are many of you that have business ideas, but nobody knows. It's an idea that can bless you and stop hunger in your family but nobody knows when light comes it exposes darkness let me show you a scripture Galatians 1 Galatians 1 let's just look at that one scripture Galatians 1 verse 23 and 24 Galatians 1 God wants to walk through you not for pride and arrogance are you getting me I'm not talking of the kind of lifting and influence that takes you to hell. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in time past now preached faith which once he destroyed. 24. Everybody read it. One to read. And what? How did they glorify God? That means when they saw what God did with my life and they said Lord is this what you meant when you said you can bless people is this what you meant when you said you can use people are you ready to pray this prayer again lift up your voice say Lord I'm available I'm available make a spectacle out of my life Lord make a spectacle out of koinonia in 2014 Dr. Sasso, let there be a display of the glory. Let the nation see we are a city on a hill. They glorified God in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to pray for yourself now and your family and say lord it's also my year of dominion listen you're going to pray and say lord i don't just want to chorus this it must be dominion dominion means absolute control are you listening to me 
therefore pray that for you and your family whatever has mocked God to your face this is the year it must come under your feet lift your voice and pray dominion oh God kingdom authority pray is it finance is it a terminal disease is it lack of breakthrough is it sin your family members are not saved pray get angry in your spirit those outside are you praying those outside are you praying record to secretary total dominion No more fibro this year. No more getting sick and getting well. No. Pray. No more prosperity today and poverty tomorrow. You will not be on fire today and backslide tomorrow. No. The part of the joss is as a shining light. It shines brighter, brighter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now you are going to pray for Koinonia. We are going to say, Lord, take us to another level. Take us to another level another level of impact another level of prosperity pair yourselves into three pair yourselves into three those who are lying down or praying just leave them those who cannot stand just leave them i want us to pray seriously hallelujah you're going to say lord lift us up we're not just asking for fame we're asking for impact salvation transformation Come on, lift your hands and pray. Let this place become Bethel, the place of bread. Bethel, the place of bread. If you love this ministry, pray. The ministry is not Joshua Selman, the ministry is you. Lord, a harvest of souls a harvest of souls a harvest of souls a harvest of souls transformation oh god drunkards will come here and become apostles prostitutes will come and become prophets your word is mighty and it prevails in our midst your word is mighty and it prevails in our midst this year we experience character we experience excellence at another dimension we experience wealth and prosperity as a ministry at another dimension revival oh god let there be a fire of revival that will spark from here and spread to the nations and spread to cities and spread to campuses and spread. Pray. Pray for our Friday programs. Pray for the counselings. Pray for all our external administrations. Pray. Pray for the miracle services. Lord, let every service be a miracle service. Beginning from this one, let every service be a miracle service. Let this place become a solution center. Let this place become a place of authentic miracles, authentic signs, wonders, breakthroughs, restoration, let the sick come and be healed. Let blind eyes be healed. Let incurable diseases be cured. Let there be a mantle of healing, of breakthrough, 
of prosperity may men come here and have their spiritual life fired up fired up passion oh god passion oh god for the things of the spirit this is a place where we infect people with hunger with passion with fire for the things of the kingdom pray this is a place of love no discrimination no discrimination this is a place of love everyone is special everyone is honored we will not teach error in this place hallelujah hallelujah now listen to me we're almost rounding up listen please inside and outside everybody listen please hallelujah i want you to know that in 2014 you are first an ambassador of heaven second you are an ambassador of this ministry are you listening to me that the gentleman who came and testified that he went to preach I'm not the kind of people that does God of this, God of that. I don't have any. We teach kingdom. We give you a kingdom mindset. Are you listening to me? But because you belong to this structure, you must, there are certain, we have a culture. Are you listening to me? We have a culture. You can come as you are, but you do not remain as you are. Something should happen and change you. Hallelujah. We have core values in this place. Our first core value is love. That's why you don't see anybody. We don't say, come and sit down because your father is the president or your father is the governor. We don't want to know. Where God grants us opportunity to know, we salute you and then that's all. Hallelujah. So you must contribute in letting the love of God. The first thing that should be seen in your life is love, not power, love. You can be anointed and not walk in love. That means this is the year that you maintain your words. The Bible says, let your words be seasoned with salt, that it may minister grace. Make up your mind this year. No gossiping about people. No backbiting. No carrying news left, right, and center. Your job is to love. If somebody does something, go and talk to him, not about him. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? The love of God. He says, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. Not when you raise the dead. When you have love one for another. Hallelujah. There is no doubt that you step on one another's toes. So you must, it must be a predefined thing in your heart that you're going to walk in love. Because the Bible says there remaineth these three, faith, hope, and love. He said the greatest is love. Hallelujah. So this is the spirit and the culture that you must have. Your conversations must speak love. When you are angry, keep quiet rather than saying nonsense. Hallelujah. The Bible says, He that does not err, if a man err not in words, that man is a perfect man, able to burdle his tongue. Just say anything anyhow. Number two, character. Everybody say character. There are many Christian circles where the men of God are just thinking of power. Let me tell you, anointing can take you far, but it's character that will sustain you. Hallelujah. That's the reason why you can see a ministry rise up. They are anointed and then they fall like a leaf because they lack the character. This must be the year you will contend to manifest a Christ-like life. You don't live a life, a dirty, polluted life somewhere and then the only place they just see you in church and people say, ah, ah, even you. Character. It must not be something you fake. It must be a revelation. And that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Character. Every, the entire scope of whatever character means to you. When you do something wrong, tell people I'm sorry. Don't say, Debbie, I'm older than you. When I graduated, you just entered secondary school. No. No. Have respect for people. Don't come with village and tribal and cultural mindsets. I'm from a royal family. In a village, I must sit down before others sit. Keep your, you have been called out of every tribe and tongue. Are you getting my point? Listen, let me tell you something. 
Many of us here are young people. And we are, we are, this is a training ground. We are training you not just to be anointed people, but to be leaders. So that when you go somewhere, you can speak a right. You have a culture. Don't speak anyhow. Hallelujah. Remember, you are representing Christ. Especially for as many of us outside. Speak like a believer. Always know that the Holy Spirit is in you. Number three, the anointing. You must contend and let the anointing find expression in your life. It's not enough for you to just come and be blessed. You are, are, are an extension of the ministry. Our job here is to equip you and release you with the power of the Holy Spirit. You should go back to your hostels, go back to your workplaces and legislate on behalf of the kingdom. Not to be jumping and shouting and saying, I'm anointed. Let everybody in this office bow to me. Demonstrate it. When there is breakthrough, when there is wisdom, when there is character. Hallelujah. Number four, this year, you must adopt excellence as a lifetime. Everybody say excellence. We must keep contending. It's one of the things I told the leaders. And we'll still talk more during our retreat. Hallelujah. Excellence. Excellence is not about an expensive life. Excellence is an organized life. Are you following me now? Excellence from your personal hygiene to everything about your life. There are some of us who are born again, but we are so dirty. You are so dirty. This is the one weakness. This is where the devil is cheating you. This year you must repent. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't just laugh. excellence hallelujah your words your words you must pray this year those dirty godless films that keep putting satanic dictions you must get them out of your life because you are a man on a mission don't say anything and say this is the slang invoke this is a kingdom this is a culture hallelujah Jadel sang and said this is my culture you have a culture don't go ahead, they, they see you in, in, in the market and you are speaking as if, as if you, are, you are never born again. Even in your joke, joke the word, speak the word. I'm saying this to you because many of you are emotional now. Immediately you step out of here, you almost want to do something, you just remember, ah. Don't do things because of men do it because God Almighty is watching you but much more than that that he desires to use you hallelujah praise the Lord think before you talk don't just say everything even what does not concern you these are many people put themselves into trouble you go and choke your mouth into people's businesses and enter their trouble too hallelujah praise the Lord it's very very important so let this year be different say I'm a light say it I'm a light no offense no unforgiveness no God forbid no over my dead body all those demonic languages pack them and throw them outside this is a new season even when see people will mock you whether in your workplace or your department let them mock you until they see what you become they are only mocking you because they are intimidated by the light that is shining. Hallelujah. When somebody talks against you, bless you. When they think you are coming to divorce them, you say, bless you. I heard what you said. I'm not happy, but I love you. I belong to a government. Are you following me now? Not the year of saying, let me meet with him and you will know. Mm -mm. I asked you from the beginning, can two walk together? So are you ready? See, this is it. If you are ready to walk with God, you will see his hand. But if you, are, if you don't see the hand of God this year, it's not God's fault. For me, I told God, I said, Lord, whatever it takes, I'm ready to walk with you. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you now. I want you to believe it. I want you to believe it. I told God, I said, Lord, I'm more committed than ever before to serve your people. And I'm saying it before everyone. My, my primary assignment, listen, my primary assignment is you. You. 
whenever you talk of koinonia, think of yourself. Don't think of Joshua Selman or the leaders in the ministry. No. Hallelujah. Without you, we have no ministry. Hallelujah. And I pray to God. I said, Lord, I'm ready to make sure that all that you have put in me, let your people receive it. Hallelujah. Before we go and we are traveling around and blessing other people, and then you are hearing of the mighty things that God is doing with us in other places, and you are wondering, oh Lord, I'm so close, and I'm not receiving anything. I told God, I said, Lord, if I never go for any ministration, this is why we are opening up the doors for counseling and all of, all of these avenues. We are restructuring the leadership to allow us to have access. In fact, I was talking with somebody and my heart was bleeding. I said, this year I will make sure I have time for the workers. There are many times that many of you want to see me, but because of how busy we are, I told myself, I said, look, not only will I be a leader or have an apostolic ministry this year i want to be a father i don't want people sitting down and dying and then we are there let me tell you even if the whole nigeria is talking about us and you are not getting blessed we have failed this is what people like joseph suleiman will call public success and private failure are you getting my point even if they say this ministry is not being impactful if you are being blessed we are fulfilled because you are our primary assignment. And so I'm telling you again on behalf of myself and the leadership of this ministry, we are committed. We will keep fasting. We will keep praying until you become all that God has destined for you to be. Even before anybody. So please and please, I want you to relax and know that you are not all of you. I'm speaking to everybody, even those outside. We don't have second class citizens in Koinonia. Are you listening to me? We don't have favorites. No. We love people based on our assignment. It will have to make us interact with more people than others. But let me tell you something. Everybody in this ministry has a right to be heard, has a right to see me. I'm not one superman in myself somewhere. Are you following me now? Because I know that I need to say this because many of you may have been feeling, I know that there are some of you, I remember one day, a lady tried calling me and I just woke up in the night and I decided that the next day I was going to call her. When I picked, I called her. This lady shouted. She could not believe she dropped the phone. You understand? She was surprised. Her boss, I think she was telling her mother. For many of you, that's nice. You feel like a celebrity based on God's standard. That is, that is very bad of a leader. I can't promise seeing everybody where you want. Don't wake me when I'm sleeping because I made a commitment to help. I still have my sense, all right? I won't pick your call. Praise God. But then I'm saying there is a system. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, I've made up my mind that we will have special counseling sessions for the workers. Special, just the workers, one by one by one. One by one. You see, everybody pray with you. If you are not a worker, these are some of the things you are missing. Praise God. Hallelujah. There are privileges that our leaders must receive. For instance, the heads of department cannot book for counseling. It's an insult. Why will my leaders book for counseling to come and see me? You see that? So don't be offended if you have to book for counseling. I promise you will stay as long as possible to meet your needs. Are you following me now? And some of your family members... If you try to call me and I don't pick, by God's grace, we are going to announce, we are strategizing. In fact, there are a few new departments we are creating to make sure that we meet the needs of everybody, that even if it's a text you send, you will be responded to. So just cooperate with us. We are improving. This year will be better than last year in Jesus' name. Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. You too, you must be ready to cooperate. Look at me. I've said my own part. What I'm committed to do to you, you must be committed. Your own part of commitment is don't frustrate our sacrifice. Receive what we are teaching. Let it not enter one ear and go out there. Put it to work. Hallelujah. And be evangelist. Say, do the work of an evangelist. Invite people, not just people who are not serious, people who really, 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 really need help and need God. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for 2014. Please make sure you lift your hands, especially those outside and watching. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless you with the blessings of heaven. I bless you with the presence of God. I bless you with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I pray for you that even as you begun in this space, you will sustain this space to the end of the year. I rebuke death. We will not mourn the death of anybody this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, any covenant that anyone has with death, anywhere they have said they must bury you this year, we cancel that report now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that the scepter of dominion come upon your hand. That as you leave this place, you will begin to reproduce what you are seeing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let the doors of wealth be open unto you. Let the doors of influence be opened up to you. I pray that this year, your prayer life will enter another dimension. Your word life will enter another dimension. I pray that the spirit of true holiness will come upon you this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that the Lord will make your feet like Heinz feet that you will run and overtake everyone that has gone ahead of you I pray for you that before you pray this year before you even make mention of it may the Lord answer you may the Lord hear you in the day of trouble I pray for your businesses I command them to prosper I command them to flourish in the name of Jesus May the Lord grant you the desires of your heart. I pray that the anointings and the graces God has put upon this ministry, let them find expression in your life. Everywhere you go this year, you are favored. You are favored, favored with God, favored with men. In the name of Jesus. All those who have planned to put you down, they are the ones who will celebrate your lifting this year. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command that you are preserved. You enjoy the ministry of angels. And I pray for you that this gift of God that is in you, that not even you will be able to hide it this year. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let those who need what you carry look for you. You will not look for them this year. I compel them to look for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, it's not important to have an expectation. You must know what else can be expected. You can have an expectation that is based on your limited understanding of who God is. But sometimes your horizon needs to be broadened to know what else he can do. So in as much as it's good to have an expectation, you must know that more than my expectation, he is able the Bible says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above all we ask or think. So God's ability is limitless. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There are so many people tonight, I may not want to necessarily interrupt the flow of what God is doing. We'll find some time in the course of the service to just take our time and really really honor and appreciate everyone there are people who have traveled from everywhere within and outside this nation and we honor all the men and women of god i have my dear friends and the ministers of god seated here in front we'll take our time to really really celebrate everyone later on but i want us to just focus on the word and let's trust the lord to help us praise the lord amen second peter chapter one we began to deal with this second peter chapter one we're reading the first three verses just to establish something for our faith to rest upon and then we trust god and whilst we're doing that please may i request that the communion be set so that we would make it really really very fast we'll start from verse two verse two and three it says grace and peace please look up if you don't have a bible be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus 
our Lord. Verse 3. According as his divine power. Stop and let me just buttress on this for the sake of those who are just joining us today. We establish the fact that every possibility in the kingdom comes from his divine power. That means the active agency that is responsible for results in this kingdom. It is not his word. It is not faith. It is his divine power. Please understand. Faith and the word are instruments that convey his divine power. That the active ingredient, the force behind the performance of God is his divine power. The Bible says his divine power hath given unto us all things. That means there is nothing that is outside of the jurisdiction of his divine power to provide. Are we together? So if you are healed, the agency that brought that healing is his divine power. If you are lifted tonight like you will be, it comes from his divine power. If God opens a door, if he smashes obstacles, no matter what it is, whatever happens in your life that can only be done by God, was sponsored by his divine power are we together now so we're establishing this please get the teaching yesterday the dynamics of the anointing please please get it it is very important that your understanding about how the power of god works is straightened and accurate i shared something yesterday i might repeat a little bit of it this morning or this evening really but then the goal is to get us to solidify our understanding it's a very simple principle but if you do not have it you may never see the power of god at work are we together now yes so his divine power hath given us all lifting all healing all speed all restoration are we together now all energizings all deliverances his divine power because for many years you see from preachers to members to elders in the faith we have not exactly understood the dynamics how the word of god how faith and how the anointing synergizes themselves together to produce a performance in believers so we have those who believe in what they may call the word we have those who believe in what you may call faith we have those who believe in what you call the power of god and none of them is wrong because the results show they must be doing something right are we together now yes the divine power of god is the central working force that bets his ability in the life of people and over their situations the word of god listen like i taught you faith you know comes from the word of god your conviction of it are we together now faith is derived from the word of god that means that god has made several propositions in scripture according to his integrity is a manifesto of what he is able to do are we together now so he's proposing to the saints that for trusting me these are the possibilities that can accrue to your life so it's up to you by the ministry of the holy spirit to come to a point of conviction are we together now when you come to that point of conviction then you are mandated to demonstrate your conviction through an action of obedience the name given to both the conviction and the action you take is faith if you are convicted and do not act in compliance with the condition that makes for that result you have believed but you are not in faith is it simple enough are we together now that means that faith is not only resident within the heart it starts with the heart but there must be a step that is taken to honor your conviction understanding has come to you when you know your role in the equation of your results if you do not know the role you have to play in the equation of your result you do not understand it this is very important but the word of god please listen is the agency by which faith is built it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god 
it doesn't necessarily mean just hearing a voice that means that there is a system of interaction with your spirit man when you are exposed to whether the written word or the spoken word if it's the word that comes from god it sustains an ability to rest upon your spirit full of god's convictions the bible is full of his propositions this is what i can do and then you prove it by saying lord i trust you so the word of god itself i'm careful to say this now because i don't want you to make to sound like the word of god is not powerful it is powerful but it is powerful because it is the carrier and the container of his power are we together now the anointing follows the word of god wherever the word of god goes that's where the anointing goes so if the word of god goes in the direction of healing his power goes in the direction of healing if the word of god goes in the direction of lifting his power goes in the direction of lifting but i said something yesterday that i will establish quickly for the purpose of the impartation that would happen later that our limitations or the inability to see the fullness of god's power is caused by two factors yesterday i attempted to establish that number one the nature of the operation of the anointing is that just because you are anointed does not mean everything can be done the anointing works like money are we together now that every level and every dimension has a spiritual price tag the possibilities that can be purchased at that level if you have 10,000 naira there are certain things you can obtain with that amount are we together now you cannot obtain anything higher than 10,000 so I gave an example yesterday come doctor I gave an example yesterday that if I am a man of God and I have let me use for the purpose of example say 100,000 naira worth of anointing watch this I hope you understand why my, my example when this gentleman comes to receive from me under god god is limitless his power is limitless the holy spirit is unlimited are we together now but remember the possibilities are according to the power that works not lives in me are we together now then when i pray for this brother father bless him father lift him the level of grace that i have are we together now will scan through this man's life and only solve the problems that are within the grace oh dear i'm just spotting him please let's honor the pastor of second equa here may the lord honor you sir i cannot but honor you thank you surprise surprise thank you god bless you so much sir hallelujah are we together so this man has He's in need of restoration. Watch this now. He's in need of speed. He's in need of lifting. He's in need of deliverance. He's in need of healing. He's in need of impartation of a supernatural grace. Say the gift of the spirit. It is only the problem that is within the level of the anointing I have that will be solved. He may fall down. He may roll under the anointing. He will get up with some cases solved and others not solved this is the reason why being anointed once is not enough you must strive to grow in glory because you get to a point where every challenge that is brought is within the level of your grace that's when you become a blessing so the bible says it this way how god anointed jesus you see that now the secret of his going around doing good was not just that he was anointed look at the extent to which he was anointed when you read isaiah chapter 47 it begins to show us the dimensions or the progressions of the anointing in the life of a person and the possibilities that can happen at every level ezekiel the prophet was in a vision and he began to see a river that flowed from the east side of the temple and then it was to his ankle then it was to his knee it was to his loins and then it was a river that he could not flow through it and the bible says whatever contacted that river at that level every fish that was dead came alive 
there are certain conditions and levels of the anointing where certain results are activated all results are not activated at every level if you're with me say amen, amen. this is the reason why the apostles will minister and sometimes they will honestly admit that this level of grace is not at work in their life and they will go and outsource for other dimensions of the spirit to continue from where they've stopped are we together i believe and i am convinced that the sons of skiva had succeeded in some level of deliverance at one point or the other i do not want to believe that was their first trial the level of confidence reveals that they must have gotten some results so they said we adjure you by jesus whom paul preaches and hear the response of the demon jesus i know you see in other words the demon is saying i know who i am i'm not stupid i know the level of grace that can get me out here i know that jesus has it i know that paul has it but i don't know where you are standing and you see this is it so if you can if you can't pray for me and get me free then i will pounce on you you see it now it's a it's a big risk to be anointed at a very low level because you will not see the need to press for more of god and then you will believe that just because the anointing is there just like money just because you touch the back of your pocket and there's something there does not mean you have what it takes to purchase the things that you want so this is what we identified as the number one reason why we may not be able to obtain certain results and you know the level of grace and anointing at work in your life by the testimonies that recycle around your life and ministry the testimonies that recycle around your life are a testament they are proof that this is what the grace you have can produce are we together number two we discussed yesterday if you remember very carefully that the second um revelation that we must understand on the dynamics of the anointing is that your understanding is what structures the efficiency of the anointing listen carefully that means that it is not enough to be anointed the dimensions and the possibilities that the anointing produce is where your understanding takes it to i gave you an example yesterday that the anointing is likened to a reservoir of water are we together and your understanding is like the host wherever you channel the water to it will go the pressure and its ability to give life is not in doubt but the various areas that will partake of that water is governed by this host call your understanding that means listen that means that if all i know is the dimension of god that heals every time i pray for someone the only dimension they will see in their life is healing my understanding will continue to push the anointing to manifest as the healing power of god so if the person is looking for prosperity for instance i will pray for the person but you will find out that he will be healed but not prosper and the reason is because the moment i sustain an understanding of the economic system of god then the power of god can follow that new pathway to heal his finances are you getting what i'm saying now yes so if i do not understand the principles that make for restoration after a delay i can come and say in the name of jesus be restored no the anointing will want to follow the path of restoration but understanding has not opened the channel so the anointing is limited and it will be forced to follow the path that is currently open and if that path is healing or whatever it is then you see it there that means that you are efficient in the dispensing on the, of the power of God to the degree to which you sustain understanding of God's ways, his methodologies. Hallelujah. So in my example, like I gave, every time there was delay in a man's life, restoration came exclusively through the prophetic are we together now that means that if i want the power of god to bring restoration to this man the power of god must flow through the prophetic to produce that effect if it flows through any other channel it may bless the man but not restoration 
are you getting what i'm saying now that means that if i want restoration i will create a pathway of the prophetic for the anointing to come and bless this man this is very very powerful because most believers um and this is the reason why you may want to reason this with me for a while that our fathers respectfully speaking and all those who have gone to be with the lord a number of them did not pay the price to get illumination and spiritual enlightenment are we together they subjected themselves in much fasting and prayer and they had very heavy deposits of the anointing but you notice that with the level of anointing they had their results were small because the understanding that will give that anointing expression to manifest in the various facets of their lives were not there we went to second kings yesterday and we saw how that the problem was not the oil the problem was the vessels the vessels if there is a vessel of the understanding of the healing ministry and it is filled the anointing will flow if there is a vessel of prosperity the anointing will flow if there is a vessel of church growth the church will grow if there is a vessel of speed etc etc so it's not enough to be anointed that's why jesus mentored people by giving them over 99 percent teaching they sat under a strong teaching ministry and then in one day they received an impartation we reverse the case in our generation we are always doing impartations we lay hands you fall down you stand up we lay hands you fall down you stand up we lay hands you fall down you stand up but the results do not change because the understanding that gives it expression is not there notice that for such people who have been receiving impartation for many years the day they get any light the result is almost instant because it's like the anointing has been piling up just waiting for the doorway that opens for it the walking knowledge of the power of god i believe in the power of god but it is very frustrating to not know how it can translate to the results of people your being anointed does not mean anything until lives are changed and transformed in a way that is notable enough please listen listen take note of it in a way that is notable enough in a crowd like this my brothers and sisters please reason with me that in a crowd of thousands of people like this and several others from around the world imagine that at the end of this service only three or four or five people are healed delivered or lifted by god's standard even by human standards you did a bad job so you are a blessing to the degree to which you have intimacy with god and you understand the operations of his divine power enough to be able to flow like a river Shabakataya. flow like a river so that in one hour someone who is probably standing I'm, I'm told they had to create a new overflow so let's use the overflow four right you're just standing at overflow four hoping lord will you touch me and in five minutes you check around and you cannot understand your life again because you have moved to another dimension his divine power his divine power please hear me whatever issue of concern it is the divine power of god that is able to produce it we're here thousands of us with our various requests representing our pain our disappointments our frustrations our expectations my assignment as a man of god is to bring your challenges face to face first with god and then his divine power and then if i can do that i finish my assignment my assignment is to connect your situation with the power of god and get out of the way and then you watch the wonder working power of jesus when you don't get out of the way you become an interruption to the efficiency of the power so the assignment of an anointed man of god as it were is to allow the lord to use him by the spirit of god to connect the challenges of people to his divine power if you can do that a miracle service has started hallelujah
and so then it becomes it becomes mandatory upon us men and women of god to study the systems that can help us connect the power of god to people's problems like you connect a a, a fuse to a socket and switch it on you finish yours and the gadget begins to work it works for as long as that connection is there mm. hallelujah praise the lord so let it not surprise you if within the next few minutes you turn around and cannot see what you came here with it is his divine power mm. his divine power remember the testimony of our precious mother was so touched when she shared that testimony just like that in the twinkling of an eye someone's life changes the twinkling of an eye a grace you did not come here with goes back with you a twinkling of an eye a challenge that you have had that has been age long listen let me tell you don't get too used to the hand of satan on your life just because his hand has rested for a long time does not mean it cannot be lifted you tried lifting it with different graces so they did their best but there are graces that can lift it is true it is true praise the lord your assignment tonight is to believe that his divine power is able to come through for you and then number two to be prepared listen listen please this is your own part now to be prepared to respond by faith what does it mean to respond by faith to listen for the instructions that make for your result it's important every result has a strategy a pathway that produces it if your challenge is jericho you need to know how to go around and shout if your challenge is the red sea you need to know how to use the rod to part it if your challenge is five loaves and two fish to feed five thousand you need to know the mystery of thanksgiving that makes for multiplication if your challenge is the leprosy of naaman you need to know how to go to jordan to wash all results are not produced by the same strategy it is the same divine power but your faith must be anchored on an instruction that is tied to it deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day it says that you will be set up on high above all nations of the earth and that all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you praise the lord that's how it works so while you take your eyes away from your pain you must set your gaze on something else jesus the possibilities is it true oh god that you can turn my family situation around seven of us came for this miracle service and lord i don't even know where you will start but then you listen you listen you listen sometimes it can come as one prophetic word and it's done look let me tell you something the ease with which miracles happen i think is the reason why many people cannot receive it how do you look at someone like this and say go it's done what does that mean you are making a mockery of me i sang praise and worship i rolled on the ground and i stood here and all you tell me is go was that not what naman was complaining about he said you mean you want to embarrass me i just go and wash in a river I thought you will even come out and salute me and give me something more intelligent but you see the ways of God are not like the ways of men Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus and he said the wind blow it where it listed he says you cannot tell where it's going nor where it's coming he says so is one who is led of the spirit you have to be spiritual to understand the ways of God you have to be spiritual because traditions of men can make the word of god of non effect it can strangle the potency of god's word but tonight i agree with you and i know that there are people here who are determined that everything we are going to be doing here within the next hour or so that it will culminate to a tangible result let me tell you this i love jesus christ i love him with all my heart and i made a vow unto god 
that among the many things that will happen to the people that he ever brings to me and puts under my care wasting their time will not be part of it i made up my mind by god that you should not come for koinonia twice to testify no 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 you should come twice to grow you should come twice to learn you should come twice to know god but one encounter should be enough it's true one encounter apostle i came to take fresh fire one encounter one encounter i came to break the bands of witchcraft and wickedness in my family one encounter one encounter apostle my family members did not come with me but they asked me to represent them it doesn't matter one encounter the power of god master he says he told the centurion let me come to your house to honor you being a captain in the army he said no for i am also like you a man under authority i understand the stretching power of authority i may be limited as a person but the roman government has a jurisdiction and that whoever is under the influence of that government can feel the effect of the government so they may not be here but the earth is still the lord's so they are still within the jurisdiction of his reach and if you are a man under the authority of that owner then the power of god should flow riding on the integrity and the sovereign power of that owner to touch anybody anywhere this i believe this i believe this i believe apostle i don't even know the name of my situation i've gone to the hospital they have done everything jesus if he said he was just healer would have found reason to be afraid later on but he says i am the resurrection and the life what is resurrection giving life to something that has no business having life resurrection resurrection I am he that was dead but now is alive apostle i came here with my cv is it that god cannot give me a job i've gone around looking for jobs again and again i've applied everywhere god should see my family what then is the blessing if the anointing cannot change the situation what does it mean to be a blessing as a man of god does it mean to preach well does it mean to be sympathetic to people's situation as important as that is sympathy does not produce result it only provides comfort god did not call us to be sympathizers no he says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me too then he begins to list all the things that will happen and then at the end of all of those things he says to give them beauty for ashes the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called oak or the trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might in their result be glorified john chapter 17 and verse 1 jesus christ lifted up his eyes to the heavens praying and he taught us a principle there verse one he says father the hour has come and then he said glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee so how is god glorified when the son is glorified how is god glorified as a healer when the son is healed when the daughter is healed how is god glorified as a lifter when the son is lifted when the daughter is lifted how is god glorified as a deliverer the dimension of god that he gets glory from is the dimension that the result manifests in your life he cannot be glorified as one who is quick and powerful until your life testifies it your goodness is real i testify your goodness is real your favor is real i testify your power is real i testify how then do you know the favor of god is real listen 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 your faith must grow to trust 
the difference between faith and trust is that faith is predicated on god's integrity are we together now it, uh, on who god is but trust is based on his integrity and his track record you cannot trust a man until there is a track record are we together if i'm meeting you for the first time dr emeka and they tell me you are a doctor i will have faith in you i can't trust you it's too early it's too early to trust you i will see what your injection does for me are we together now when you give me an injection and i cannot walk what should happen to you when you give me an injection i am fine then i come to you and you give me a recommendation and it works i begin to note you and associate you with my joy and then eventually i conclude that this man is worth my belief this man is also worth my staking my all to so that the day you give me an instruction that i do not understand i can reach back at the archives of your track record and say i may not know what you are saying but i know what you said and i know what i saw genesis 21 verse 1 genesis 21 i testify i testify that your goodness is real I testify, I testify that your goodness is real. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did to Sarah as he had spoken. Trust in the Lord. How do you trust in the Lord? Take cognizance of his benefits, be observant what did he do in 2001 what did he do in 2005 you see if the lord had not been on our side now may israel say on the strength of that track record they named him they gave a name that should not change a testament of their trust a testament of their trust so your assignment is to believe that God is able. Take your eyes away. I repeat, take your eyes away. Please take your eyes away from anything that is not Jesus tonight. And focus. Apostle, they've prayed for me. A prophet just like you prayed for me. An apostle just like you prayed for me. A pastor even conducted night vigils in our house. I know and I respect God and I respect the grace upon that man. Except that one more thing I did not teach you about the anointing. Is that not every anointing blesses you. The man must be sent. There were many widows in Zarephath. But to none was Elijah sent. When the word of God passes you, it does not bless you. It is when it is sent. He sent, not brought. He sent forth. It was when the king sent for Joseph that his life changed. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything. Not when you moved around. When I sent thee. Because every time he sends it, his integrity is upon it. Tonight, God is sending his word to me to you to us the word that leads the word for your ministry the word for your life is going to be a quick walk some of you write from the communion as you partake from the communion you finish your own miracle service you will just join others in rejoicing it's true you know yesterday i observed and we learned yesterday that the reason why the communion does not produce is because we are only eating bread and juice we have not discerned it the bible says there is a sin that a man can commit the sin of not discerning the lord's body you cannot discern the possibilities that come from that body for many years i took communion and i was left in the dark as to the relevance of this thing in my life I would just take the wafer and take the the drink and then stop there nothing happened until i found out that the life-giving factor of everything is understanding understanding is what gives life 
to the spiritual activities and the processes that we're involved with so it is not enough to just hear it is not enough to just do it is the understanding that sponsors what we do that produces the results i don't know if there are people here tonight who are here insisting that as surely as there is a god in heaven whatever i came with i must leave it here tonight it is important god is giving you understanding now when i came into the house of the lord then understood i the house of god is bethel not just a place of bread but a place where the bread is broken two men met jesus in m house and they began to discuss the messiah and he was there with them but they could not see and then when he broke bread the bible declares that their eyes were open and he departed My assignment is to continue to study continually by the Spirit the processes that makes for the liberty of the saints. Much more than the transformation of the saints, much more than providing an atmosphere for encounters, the saints need to be brought to a point where they encounter the reality of God's power. The power of God can be encountered. Hallelujah. So we're going to partake of the communion very quickly. And for many of you, this will be one communion you will not forget. Yeah. It doesn't matter even if you are the one who serves your own communion. You may serve it like a ritual. The wafer does not have any power to do anything for you. The bread, the cup does not have any power. But how shall these things be when I'm using only bread and cup? The power of the highest shall overshadow that emblem. And whatever comes out of it can produce any result. A handkerchief and an apron is not even alive. Talk more of having faith. But when his divine power comes upon it, it becomes an instrument of signs and wonders. The air that you breathe and the sound that is produced from you does not sustain any power except that when your speaking becomes the voice of God, then it is no longer the words of man. John said, I am the voice of one. So when you hear me, you hear that one. Hmm. Hallelujah when it's time to pray for the sick i like you to believe god believe god to set people free we we'll do it very fast because there are so many people and praying for the sick takes a lot of time we'll do it fast and then after that we'll do the deliverance and the impartation and whatever it is that needs to leave you it must go it must go this night it must go this night please jump up on your feet your divine power your divine power able to lift me to a higher dimension in the spirit your divine power is someone praying on the last day of the feast jesus came and said is anyone thirsty is anyone thirsty the final day of the feast go ahead and pray please inside outside lift your voices and pray Are you praying? Lord, I believe it is your divine power. Now I know how the results will come. Your divine power. I know how the lifting will come. Your divine power. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I am under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. We are under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over us. 
We are under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over us. Yeah. Lift your voice and pray. Sabarando Seneca Tabariatash. Tonight is my night. I discern. I discern. Sabrakato Seneca Prash. And the Legabrande Zedica Shobragadabaladabash. Krato Zazigadabarunde Ketosh. Embrakato Zaleke Pradish. Shebradika Posh. Rakato Variadabaladabash. Rakato Barindes Kemeritash. Rakaparuda Siadabaladaba. He Barando Zelekarusia Dabaladaba. Please keep praying. Hallelujah. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. We'll begin our reading from verse 49 to 56. John chapter 6. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. Next verse. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. 51. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, not is like my flesh. Is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. 52. And the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Stop here. Just, just go back. Just go back. This is what he's saying. That in the flesh of the Son of Man, and in the blood of the son of man is his life that the life of the flesh is in the blood are we together now listen very carefully so that when you partake please keep that scripture when you partake of it with understanding the bible says that you are not just taking a wafer you are not just taking a drink but that you are you are opening up yourself to partake of the life of god Next verse. 54. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath, I told you the word there is not eternal life. It's the word zoe. It's not the longevity of the life, but the quality of the life. And I will raise him up on the last day. 55. We're stopping at 56. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. The last verse. He that eateth my flesh, this is it, and drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me, and I in him. This is a theological concept called the doctrine of interpenetration. Is the system by which two separate entities are interwoven to become one. The same mystery in marriage, the same mystery with the Spirit of God. So that by the mystery of partaking in the communion, that means the Spirit should not know the difference between your body and God's body. Are we together now? Yes. Let me tell you what that means. Come. Look at this. Emeka, come. Watch this. If this lady is his wife and she's weak and he's strong, his strength is her own too. You understand that? Are you getting me? Not part of his strength. His strength. So if you say she's strong, you are right. Are we together now? This is very important now. That means that when she's strong and he's weak, 
her strength is his strength too interpenetration and so now when you partake of this although your body may be weak and frail although your finances may be weak and frail although your ministry may be weak and frail although your body may be ravaged by all kinds of demons but here you are introducing like you are shaking the hand of the other partner in a wrestling and here he comes through this mystery as little as this is let me tell you when you understand this mystery you will not even be able to hold this thing you see like this hallelujah i'm going to pray on this and then we're going to distribute it around it's simple enough for you to open you just here open the wafer and then the drink and please the moment you do do not litter the ground do not litter the ground i don't know what provision has been made for that but if no provision has been made whilst you take it provided you are not under the anointing just pass it to the last person at the aisle and then you make it easy for the ushers or whoever is involved to just pick them up you can use the off the bowls or whatever you have to have them we're going to pray please pray in one minute and mention the things that must live your life because they are not found in the life of the christ please pray by wisdom oh god heaven's gates open up with understanding you order the season creating day and night turning darkness into light arranging the stars to your pleasing but i can't Blessed are you, O oh Lord our God, whose words brings in the evening. Please pray one minute. We discern your body. We discern your body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, it should go around. I believe that they just brought this to represent the communion. I'm going to pray on this. This is ordinary welfare and a drink. But not after the power of God comes upon it. It says anything receives power after the Holy Ghost comes on it. Not just men. You shall receive power. The you can be this. Can receive power. Provided the Holy Ghost comes on it. He didn't say men shall receive power. No. Anything receives power when the Holy Ghost comes upon it. Your pain receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Your ministry receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Your communion receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon this. I lay my hands upon this communion representing all others that are not here I decree oh God that in a very strange way may your power flow through this in the name of Jesus let it bring miracles let it bring all kinds of deliverances in the name of Jesus whoever partakes of this tonight in the name of Jesus I declare instantly may your power begin to rest upon them let all kinds of breakthroughs begin to happen. Let infirmities give way in the name of Jesus. Let deliverances, let devils and demons begin to leave. Let doors begin to open. In the name of Jesus Christ. My flesh is meat indeed. 
we partake with understanding we partake with understanding please make sure everybody something will begin to happen to you as you partake of this you will marvel and wonder at the power of the communion Go ahead, take it with faith and watch the wonder-walking power, the wonder-walking power of Jesus, the wonder-walking power of Jesus. bring all those under the anointing out please bring them out quickly while we wait for the rest to finish please just bring them out quickly something is opening up in your spirit man my flesh is meat indeed my blood is drink indeed Please bring those under the anointing. There is a reason why I ask you to bring them. I want to pray for them. Something is already happening in the realm of the spirit. Oh, 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 oh. Please be patient tonight. God is setting people free. When there is understanding to your spiritual activity, then the power is released. The power is released. You will not believe the kinds of burdens that are leaving people already. Shalakaparuda Seketa. Mm. My flesh is meat indeed. My blood is drink indeed. He that eateth of my flesh and drinketh of my blood hath my life. Yeah, 
Ala barada gata pranda gata karusa siana gata. Shependes ke mahashabara katus kabrina gata. has not been planted by my father will be uprooted is it not written in your word that for this purpose the son of God was made manifest that he may destroy I decree in the name of Jesus we are going to begin to minister now that every force that is not of the Christ Right now, I decree and declare by an apostolic and a prophetic rod scattered around this crowd, inside and outside, everybody under any kind of bondage, I decree, be free now. Be free now. I command judgment on strange spirits. In the name of Jesus. The spirits of ancestry, the workings of bloodlines and territories, I come against you by the God of heaven. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. Listen, we are still praying. Please pay attention. I'm praying now. The Lord is showing me families. I'm seeing families under an intense yoke of retrogression. Nothing moves in that family. You can go to school. It doesn't make any difference. You can get a job. It doesn't make any difference. Have a business. It doesn't make any difference. I stretch my hands. Where are those people? Inside and outside. I declare right now. The power of God is coming upon you. It's time for your family to be released. At the count of three. One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. I lose your family. I set them free. I set them free. Shamanda kaskabarakata. Embrekete kaparoto seteka. Zeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeket
I declare freedom on those families now. I declare freedom. Shapas Kote Barakata. Don't be distracted. Just pay attention, please. Samarakato Zegedesh. Ilabanda Rahaska Barukato Shadekata. Paruza Zianakata. Brekete la Kuzianamas. Kratena Zaziamakato. You rise to a level and then you crash back. It's a pattern that exists in families. There's nothing wrong with rising. Keep rising. But you plateau at a level and then you crash back. I stretch my hands now. This is what the Lord is showing me. My God. My God. I decree and declare. The spirit that causes men to rise up and crash back in shame. Represented in anyone here. The legal hold upon which you operate is caused now in the name of Jesus. I release such people right now. Be released in the name of Jesus. Be released in the name of Jesus. Overflow 3, please lift your hands. The Lord is showing me something happening in Overflow 3. Overflow 3, please lift your hands. Mighty God. Mighty God. I see a lot of attacks. Serious attacks on Overflow 3. I don't know for whatever reason that the people that are sitting there, I'm seeing a lot of attacks. At the count of 3, Overflow 3, I want you to shout the name Jesus and there will be a mighty deliverance there. Overflow 3. 1, 2, 3. Shout Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the gate of a prison and I'm seeing people inside. The gate of a prison, like the front of a prison. And I remember scripture says to open, to set at liberty them that are bound. There are people who are moving but are in prison. All sorts of prisons. Right now I decree and declare, even by the power of the Holy Ghost, let the doors and the chains and the yokes that keep you in bondage i declare that those chains are loose now i declare that those chains are loose now and for all those in front here representing all those that i'm praying for i declare not only that the spirits leave you but that whatever they took from you as surely as the god of heaven leaves your families must testify of that restoration therefore leave them now go go out of them now in the name of jesus release their families release their spiritual lives release their finances Paradox is a hasaka paradosia. Lembra geto scalaricias hebras kodash. Prakato baradu zaziana katabaladash. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, this row, lift your hands. I just see angelic activities happening here, and I'm seeing something being removed out of people's stomachs. This is what I'm seeing here something is being removed out of people's stomachs that's what the lord is showing me just this role i don't know what it is but god is uprooting something that should not be there by the spirit of the living god let it go let it go in the name of jesus i place the word of god upon that situation it must let you go right now the lord is taking something out i still continue to see this vision god is taking something out of people's stomachs
the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. There is liberty. There is liberty. There is liberty. I'm seeing the feet of a man. And I'm seeing the feet of a man under chains. Under chains. This is what I see. And the Lord is showing me fire coming to break and consume the feet. I know that this vision is a representation of stagnation again over men and families and I declare right now according to that which the Lord has shown me in the name of Jesus that anyone whose feet is being tied in the same position right now by the power of the Holy Spirit right now something is happening to people I decree I decree and I declare let there be liberty now inside outside let there be liberty right now let there be liberty liberty i command progress to your life move forward i push you by prophecy move forward make progress move forward make progress i forbid stagnation move forward make progress I don't know how to pray this prayer now. Those who are fine up here can return to their seats. I want to pray a prayer and this will affect a lot of people. You don't have to bring the people out. I found myself pray this prayer again and again and again and again. Almost everywhere I've traveled in the last two to three months, the Lord has mandated that I pray this prayer. And my goodness, the testimonies that have come from this. This is the Lord walking in the midst of his people. That lady is not yet free, my friend. Osha, be discerning. In the name of Jesus, that lady is not yet free. It's a realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power. Moving in this place, we're in the presence of angels with God's glory on their wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy. Please someone should join the PR can join the ushers protocol can join the ushers I want to pray there is a grace for speed there is an exact grace speed is not progress no no there is a difference between progress and speed I had an encounter with the Lord and he placed this grace upon my life if not that it happened I know there is advancement and I know there is speed but I never knew what it was and how it operated until the Lord gave me an encounter truly let me tell you there is a real grace for speed and when that grace comes on you you will join the world in shock as to what becomes of your life and the Lord wants that grace to come on somebody this night there's someone here that needs this grace this is why you came it's not like you are stagnated 
but it takes forever if you will believe if you will humble yourself this night and open your spirit you will be surprised I'm going to pray this prayer the reason why I ask some people to join is because every time I pray this prayer people begin to run in the spirit and by the spirit I don't know why it happens that way be sensitive please and then it is of the spirit please don't ask me why it happens that way but if you will let me pray this prayer tonight God can make five years the result of five years to come within even a month I know it works when you have this grace on your life you don't fear delay it makes no difference you will gain time within moments I decree and declare by the privilege of God's grace I stretch my hands inside everywhere overflow one two three online father I pray right now let the grace for speed at the count of three come upon someone one two three take that grace now take that grace now take that grace now I shift you speed 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 to your spiritual life speed to your finances speed in ministry speed in business speed upon your influence this is a major answer to your prayer i declare it again speed speed receive it receive it it is not by might nor by power but by the spirit of god you can be picked up upon the wings of the spirit and do things that eyes have not seen that ears have not heard i pray it again those outside receive it those outside receive it i declare speed in the similitude of elijah you will run and you will overtake the chariots of ahab Hallelujah. 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 We are going to pray. We have to redeem time. There is a lot to do. Your wife started a journey in the spirit. I'm seeing a prophetic progression in her life. There is a prophetic mantle that is searching for her. It's begun gradually. This woman you are seeing, as frail as she may look, but the hand of God will come upon her and she will speak forth the purposes of God with power. I stretch my hands upon you and I pray that the Spirit of God will perfect. Let there be a birthing, a birthing of the things that he has begun upon your life. A betting of the things that he has begun my friend come this man we may not have time to prophesy to people there's a lot to do lift your hands I don't know you you are coming from somewhere and there are two graces that God is bringing upon your life number one is for your own benefit restoration that's what I hear number two this speed that you see I prayed for is coming upon you I stretch my hands may that grace in the name of jesus first for restoration let there be a restoration of everything the devil has stolen and then i declare speed you receive it now move forward go forward in the name of jesus christ hallelujah there's an elderly woman here called rebecca 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 if we talk to people the time will be gone we have to honor it so that we can do some other things who is that rebecca please when you find the person i want to talk to her in the name of jesus christ we're going to pray for the sick Kai.
this woman is outside you are not inside you are wearing a, a red like wrapper on your head the same with what is down on you confirm it mama your name is rebecca where are you from outside i will pray for you now i don't know you i've never seen you but i want to pray for you the lord is going to honor you i decided to take a pause because um the lord just asked me to stand here that's why i'm standing here i'm standing here because i saw something that looked like a bird just come out of someone right here like this just like that just out of someone this is what i saw in the name of jesus release this family now release this family now in the name of jesus christ madam i'll pray for you your name is rebecca too please come i will pray for you i found the person i'm ministering to but i'll pray for you from where madam from where from area c area c yes sir. i want to pray for you what's wrong with your back back pain this is what it's i'm seeing true. you get it's up true, in the morning and, and then you feel a lot yes, of pain sometimes yes. you cannot even wash yes, yes. number two your chest too yes, it's true. severe it's chest true. around the breast yes, region yes. It's true. the lord is setting it's you true. free right now madam yes, in the name of jesus let it be over right now and forever in the mighty name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ I just had like a car crash in my ears you know how an accident just happens right now this is what i just had in my ears and that the family that that should happen for is in this place i'm going to pray right now be free now i command death you are a spirit i judge you by the god of heaven and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage i want to pray for you madam in the name of jesus christ that god himself will bless you and not only bless you where are your children madam huh thank you your children are here. Yes. Where are they? Patient. Isaac. Patient and Isaac. And Sarah. This may be the last word and then we have to pray for the sick. There's a lot. Patience and Isaac. Yeah. Now only no day here. Let me just pray for you. If if you are the only one who can represent them, stand up, please, my friend. Mama, I will pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Because I'm seeing a very major breakthrough coming to this family the lord himself is bringing it to a very major breakthrough i have no business saying anything god did not tell me i've not prayed the prayer yet yet you are receiving it is the grace for favor the grace for favor the grace for favor this man will be like a well-watered garden that the favor of God will call him Beulah and Hephzibah. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you, Ma. Please hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, the breakthrough that the Lord shows me, let it come and come speedily. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are her daughter? Let me pray for you, my dear. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will not say there is something in your stomach growing. Huh? I'm rebuking something. They will not tell you that there is a growth that is growing in your stomach. I just laid my hands and God is healing someone in overflow one. Oh, please hold on. There is a growth. There is a growth. There is a growth. This has been characterized by extremely painful. Your period is extremely painful. But more than that, there is a growth just around your abdominal area overflow one you don't have to come out the power of god is touching that person right now in the name of jesus christ 
my dear in jesus name by the spirit of the living god we declare your liberty complete total final in jesus name i pray praise the lord now we're going to pray for the sick praying for the sick takes a lot of time our time is already gone i i bless god that there are a number of hands tonight now listen we believe in the power of god to touch people to lift people and most times you would notice in my external ministrations i don't have time to minister to people one by one but because this is a miracle service dedicated for that the lord has honored us to be a light on this wise in this city and it is important that we're fair enough to just allow the power of god extend to people we'll do it very fast um all of the overflows all of the overflows i would request that you just move those trusting god for healing particularly please i would request that you move to the front of your projector screen that's where you are going to be prayed for um the ones that spill over do i call that overflow five now i will just request you to be patient we're going to assign a person or two there to minister to you but overflow four three two one and right in here you are here you came standing in for someone or standing in for yourself please make your way out here very quickly and let's trust the god of heaven to set you free you are here full of faith please stand up please stand up if you kneel there will not be space just come stand it doesn't matter you don't have to come in if you're outside just go to your overflow please hallelujah myself alongside the men and the women of god represented here will be praying for you look how many people are trusting god to touch them hallelujah now please you don't have to ask anybody to prophesy or speak just let them minister to you if there is need to speak any words they will let you know praise the lord there are so many people this night and so we we'll do our best so we can gain time and just just line everybody here and then we'll pray for you praise the lord prayed for just be patient and allow the men of god minister to you while that is happening our time is already gone please stretch your hands if you've not submitted your request um you can just wave it and someone will pick it up from you especially for those outside you're yet to submit your request just stretch your hands right here and let us agree this hold on please this is not religion this is not tradition this is not a ritual this is a mystery it's a revelation let us not get used to doing this just as a ritual for the miracle service because when we have the form without the power then it will not bless us there have been many many wonderful testimonies that have come out from here and um, since I'm the only one here, let the men of God minister to you. If you are still being ministered, to just focus on the ministration. But then for all others, just stretch your hands towards me. And let's agree that these Egyptians we see today, that we will see no more. Please agree. Release your faith and believe we are praying. We may not be able to prophesy to you personally. We may not be able to give you a word of knowledge. But this is a representation of your heart, your pain, your desire, your expectation. The Bible says, and thine expectation shall not be cut short. Stretch your hands and let's agree. There is a God that answers prayers. is someone praying online pray the overflows pray father we declare we're declaring as the church we're releasing an anointing the divine power of god upon these requests some of these requests are death sentences some of them are humanly impossible situations 
But unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Zakosh kamaranda kaparuza zekata paria katala kosia. Jekes kebranda katobra asada katabala dabaka. Rekete katabarada bakato barato zaziana kata. Shkala baranda kaparuza ziana kata. In the name of Jesus, we declare upon these requests a representation of the tears and the pain of your people. We decree and we declare. Makratos kalambre de keparuza ziakata bradiash. Ile peretos ziakata baranda gadash. Kritos kalabarakata baladabush. Shalabaranda kapurus. Liketeketekete baradabash. We decree and we declare. Manda prados kaziza hash kalabaranda kata. Arise for your people by the abundance of your mercy. Give your people testimonies in the name of Jesus. Jiprakatos, Kalabarakata. Believers pray, we are agreeing. Likato Janana Katabarados. Jabros Katabaranda Kata. Supernatural manifestations of your power. Supernatural manifestations of your power. Supernatural manifestations of your power. Hela barakata sosa brende kedebash. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we declare supernatural workings of miracles tonight. We declare healing miracles. We declare miracles of provisions. We declare miracles of jobs. We declare sentences of death are broken. In the name of Jesus, we declare supernatural interception, angelic interventions tonight. We declare diverse kinds of miracles, diverse workings of miracles. In the name of Jesus, we declare creative miracles. We call new organs, we call new jobs, we call for children. We call for deliverances of families. We declare miracles on every side. Let tears of family be wiped away. In the name of Jesus. We declare diverse testimonies tonight. By the workings of miracles. By the divine power of God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Father. Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your, the heavens are open in the name of Jesus. We thank you for creative miracles. We thank you for money miracles. We thank you for supernatural deliverances. We thank you, Lord, for manifesting your power. We thank you for miracle babies. We thank you for miracle job. We thank you for special miracles. Father, Lord, we thank you. For the manifestation of the world you have decreed over our lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we receive answer to every prayer request here tonight in the name of Jesus. We receive answers tonight in the name of Jesus special miracles uh, in the name of Jesus diverse kinds of testimonies uh, in the name of Jesus angelic interventions uh, in the name of Jesus supernatural supplies uh, in the name of Jesus great open doors uh, in the name of Jesus we give you praise oh God uh, in Jesus name we are prayed Amen. Amen. Let's give Jesus praise. We agree that as we have declared, it is done in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Our time is gone. Please give me two minutes. We must do the impartation. We have been fasting. We have been praying. And we have trivialized impartation in the body of Christ. We are always looking for people to lay hands on. Always looking for people to prophesy on. 
So every time we talk about an impartation, there is hardly an expectation. But a real impartation brings result. You can carry something now that you did not come here with. Please believe. An impartation is not just an anointing for ministry. I told you it's a transference of possibilities. Praise the Lord. So in the next two, three minutes, please let your heart be opened. You don't have to bring anybody out under the anointing. Just guide them, but please receive. Please receive. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. No matter the quality of your secret place, you will need impartation. There are possibilities in your life that cannot evolve just from your secret place. You will need to tap into the provision that has been vested in the body. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus. The grace, you don't have to kneel. Please, you don't have to kneel. The grace that makes for a new level of visions. People have lost visions in the body of Christ. We tell lies that we are seeing, but we are not seeing anything. Father, the eyes that see genuine visions, let there be a restoration. Let that mantle fall upon someone right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the eyes that can see into the realm of the spirit, the ears that can hear the sound of the spirit, receive it now in the name of Jesus. That prophetic river locked up within your spirit in the name that is above all names. The grace for the prophetic in a new dimension. Who is this grace coming upon? Mabato Zabarakata Embreketeta Upon all flesh, he says, I will pour out my spirit. Receive that anointing now in the name of Jesus. I believe in miracles and I believe that there is a distinct grace for signs and wonders. I'm stretching my hands. I'm seeing a dove. This is what I'm seeing. Just like a bird hovering round. In the name of Jesus Christ. Upon as many whose hearts are open. Father the anointing. The real anointing. For signs for wonders. Inside, outside. Especially upon men and women of God. I decree and declare. Let this grace for signs and wonders. Fall upon you now. In the name of Jesus fall upon you now for your church for your fellowship for your prayer group i say it again for your church for your fellowship for your prayer group receive it in the name of jesus the spirit of wisdom there is a spirit of wisdom it says doth not wisdom cry wisdom speaking says with me are he says by me kings reign and princes decree justice he says with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness i declare the grace to know what to do is called the spirit of wisdom the grace to know what to do let it come upon you right now let it come upon you right now let the spirit of wisdom come upon you right now. Let the spirit of wisdom come upon you right now. Please help those under the anointing. Talabarus kanamahashanas. Ratakapalusas yadas. I want to release favor. The grace that can make a king say up to half of my kingdom. There is a grace for favor. I testify to you people of the living God. There is a grace for favor. It is not of him that run it. Nor of him. It is not of him that, that um, run it. What's the scripture? Win it. Nor of him that run it. But of the Lord that showeth mercy. 
He said, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. And the reason why you have mercy is because the time to favor her, yea, the set time. Favor will take away hardship from your life. Not just financially, even spiritually. I decree and declare, Zakapo Shambra Kapo Zeneash, Elekate Pradeko Sonomakata, receive the grace for favor. It's coming upon you. Receive the grace for favor. Receive the grace. Favor in ministry. Favor in business. Favor in ministry. Favor in business. Favor in ministry. Favor in business. In the name of Jesus. Every geography has its favor. May the favor associated with your geography. If it was on the rocks, the king built on the rocks. It was an advantage. If it was the sea, they channeled the water for productivity. Every territory has access to favor. I declare that the favor apportioned for your territory. Let it rest upon you right now. I want to pray for the spirit of revelation to make all men see the fellowship of this mystery let me tell you this I confess to you sincerely under God that by the privilege of God's grace I'm a student of the word but I can tell you this no matter how frequent you read this there is a spirit that must come on you for your eyes to see otherwise sometimes you will see but what you will see is error sometimes what you will see will deceive you i'm praying for you we need revelation we need revelation we need revelation we need revelation some of you started with a rich deposit of this spirit but as it is right now you open scripture and you don't see anything all you continue to do is copy the messages of men of god verbatim i declare that a unique grace for revelation let it rest upon you right now access inside access inside access inside into the mysteries of the kingdom this is the year of extraordinary fruitfulness i believe there is a grace for wealth i believe it i believe there are principles for wealth i believe there are understandings that can bring resources but I believe there is a grace. There is an exact spiritual grace that works by causing men to come with their blessings. When that grace came upon Saul, three men holding two loaves of bread each saluted him and gave him one. In the name that is above all names, in this season that God has ordained for the body, that in addition to the prosperity of our souls, in addition to understanding influence and the principles of spiritual transformation let the grace that can cause a man to rise and become as strong as a nation financially may that grace rest upon you may that grace rest upon you may that grace rest upon you in the name of jesus I believe there is a grace that shields men from destruction he said destroy it not for there is a blessing in it don't touch this one there is something upon it I decree and declare let the mark that exempts men from terrorism from kidnapping from assassination from accidents the grace that exempts receive it right now for you and for your family receive it right now receive it right now i declare that whatever you have lost coming here it doesn't matter how long please believe release your faith right now in the name of jesus christ i command a sevenfold restoration i command a sevenfold restoration restoration of anointings of money of ideas of relationships of access of illumination in the name of Jesus I pray for every ministry represented here 
whatever has clamped your wings so that your influence cannot spread beyond certain borders i declare by the power of the spirit shift to a new dimension shift to a new dimension of teaching of the miraculous of the demonstration of the spirit in the name of jesus christ i will multiply them they will not be small i will glorify them they will not be few whatever keeps you small in the name of jesus i decree and declare that power is broken over you now all those trusting god for jobs here yeah. you are trusting god you have agreed with god and said lord settle me give me an honorable job i release my faith with you and i decree and declare in the name of jesus that by this time next month let it please the lord that you return with testimonies let me pray for those in business father the grace that came upon tyre and sidon that made them to be called the marketplaces of the earth i decree and declare that the spirit not only of innovation but the mastery to exchange your value the grace the fortitude to know how to exchange your value such that you are rewarded may that grace come upon you in the name of jesus christ I speak to every dying business here. Hear the word of the Lord. Come alive now in the name of Jesus. Everyone trusting God for the fruit of the womb. In the name of Jesus. Whether for you or for your loved ones. We agree by the power that put Jesus in the womb of Mary. In the name that is above all names. is called the power of the highest. That can put a seed in the womb of a woman. And keep that seed until it delivers. May that grace and that power come upon you now. We cause barrenness. We cause impotency. In the name of Jesus. Whoever has what it takes to favor you. The Bible says withhold not good from them that is due when it is within your power. I declare whoever has the power to support you the power to help lift you we compel them by the spirit to favor you in the name of jesus christ and i pray in the name of jesus we're rounding up the prayer and fasting many of you have stretched your capacity spiritually i declare the fire of prayer that can burn an incense and cause it to reach heaven in the name of Jesus every attack on your prayer life let the seven lampstands of your prayer life be lit back right now in the name of Jesus Christ receive the grace to travail receive the grace to pray any evil and wicked company and association around your life you are not free till your association is free i declare to you you may be nice but you are surrounded by wicked people who do not fear god i declare a separation between you and the wicked I declare right now divine direction for people who are saying lord what is the next step in this season should i stay here or should i go
the Bible says, and thine ear shall hear a voice. Listen, let me tell you, one mistake to miss the will of God can cost you years before you return. I declare accuracy of perception in the name of Jesus Christ that the God of heaven will give you peace by all means in the name of Jesus the last prayer point and we are done thou shall anoint Aaron and his sons and thou shall put upon him some of your honor honor is a grace it is transferable honor can be put upon a man in the name of Jesus Christ it says therefore God even thy God hath anointed you with an oil of gladness above your fellows this is not in a competitive manner but I pray for you the grace that distinguishes men from the crowd may that grace rest upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Jesus let it be from tonight that miracles and testimonies that you have never seen in your life we release them listen listen Noah released the dove from the ark after the rain it returned back as proof that it did not have a resting place then he waited a while and returned and it came back with a little olive an almond tree, an olive plant as a sign that life was restoring he sent it back the third time and it did not come back again this is how testimonies are they can be sent and they return because the condition for them to stay is not there and then they return again and say the anointing is now being introduced in that life and by the third time they are ready to be established i pray for you every long-standing testimony that has already been released from the throne and for whatever means has refused to be established in your life i declare right now in the name of jesus let that testimony manifest in your life now let that testimony manifest in your life now anyone that says over his dead body for you to succeed may god answer their prayer in the name of jesus christ and I pray for all of those who have come from far. I agree with you. I release my faith. Whether for the miracle service tonight or all through the prayer and the fasting, I agree. The same way Moses tabernacled upon the mount and returned with the radiance of the glory upon his face, return with the grace to prove that you met God. Return with the testimonies that prove that you met God return with the signs the wonders the transformation the illumination return with the evidences of an encounter in the name of jesus let's give jesus a big hand clap thank you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah praise the lord our time is gone i sincerely apologize but we thank the Lord for the encounter tonight. You will live to testify. Very quickly, please let's, let's settle down. Very quickly, please just help that woman so she doesn't injure anyone. There are people here. Please listen. Overflow one, two, three, four online. There are people here who probably have been attending the conference or just came in here tonight. And whilst you heard me teach, and whilst you saw the things that the Lord did in this place, the Holy Spirit began to convict you that you need Jesus. Jesus is not an idea. Jesus is not something and someone you can do without. I believe with all my heart that, and please prepare to clear the way for them. Overflow one, two, three. If you are at the door, please shift. There are people here under the sound of my voice who are saying, Apostle, if you will make an altar call, I need Jesus. I need him desperately. I need him truly.
there are others who are saying i love jesus but for whatever reason i need a restoration and i need my life back with him whether you belong to any of these categories please inside and outside i'm only going to count five don't be ashamed don't be afraid i want you to leave your seat very boldly and come and stand here it will be my joy and delight to lead you to jesus don't wait for someone to come before you be the first i'm counting one come quickly come quickly koinonia let's honor them let's motivate them as they come please clear the way for those who are coming from outside two apostle I'm, I'm not sure if i'm born again or not join them join them join them join them i come from a christian family am i born again no sir join them i have very good friends am i born again no sir join them The Lord is still talking to someone. I would want to come, but I'm afraid of my friends and those we came with. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, he said, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. I believe the Lord is still speaking to a few people. If you're coming, please come quickly. Young, old, make your way. Let tonight be your night of salvation. He says, in the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart like they did in the provocation in the wilderness today if you hear his voice do not harden your heart hallelujah if there are anyone's coming just allow them to quickly come i appreciate every one of you for making this bold decision please mean it sincerely and truthfully lift your right hand and say after me believing that jesus is here say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you that you are the son of god tonight i receive your life i receive your grace and i declare please help them and i declare that salvation is mine new life is mine from today till forever jesus is my savior is my lord is my friend i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in life hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you